Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto had the blood of Demon King. Here is a quick summary. Naruto is betrayed by his teammates and awakens a strange new power. He returns from a training trip three years later, but what has changed for the young blonde and who are the two women traveling with him? But before we start, if you want more stuff like this. Then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. Bachan. Roared the voice of Kanoha's loudest resident as he stormed into the office of the most powerful ninja in the village, his obviously furious and disheveled appearance causing the older blonde woman to skip her usual tirade at the genin's lack of manners. What's happened Naruto? She asked, her recently awakened maternal instincts kicking into high gear as she realized just how beat up the boy she'd come to think of as her son was. His usually pristine jumpsuit was practically in taters and soaked in blood that she really hoped wasn't his. His face had a few scrapes and bruises, but they were healing quickly, thanks to the fox's chakra. They've gone too damn far this time. I've put up with all kinds of shit from them in the past, but they crossed the fucking line. He yelled as he paced back and forth, shocking the Hokage as she'd never heard him use such language before. Naruto, calm down and tell me what happened. I can't help you if I don't know what's wrong. She pleaded, hating having to see her son in such a state and not knowing why. Naruto looked at her for a few moments in an evaluating manner before he took a few deep breaths and slumped into one of the chairs in front of the woman's desk. It started when I went to meet with the team this morning. Flashback, it was 8 a.m. as Naruto Uzumaki strolled up to Team 7's designated meeting place, a small wooden bridge on the edge of town. Outwardly he was smiling, but on the inside the young blonde was being torn up inside. For the past few weeks things had been very tense within his team, even more so than usual. It had been brewing for weeks, especially after the Otosuna invasion at the Chunin exams. The team's dark-haired Avenger had been furious that his blonde dead last teammate had, again, defeated an opponent that he, a supposed Ichiha elite, could not. The first time had been during the mission to Wave, when Naruto destroyed the ice user that had effortlessly beaten down the Ichiha, leaving him in a temporary, near-death state. Sasuke had been able to pass this off as luck or a simple fluke, mostly because he is too excited about awakening his Sharingan to think about much else. But then, in the forest of death, the dog showed him up again, this time openly criticizing him and calling him a coward, before doing battle with what turned out to be one of the legendary Sanin, Arachimaru. Again, he had managed to ignore the insult, as he was preoccupied with first the curse seal, and then training for the finals. But when he had been rescued by the blonde after the monster Gara had decimated him, he had nothing to distract him. Nothing to draw his ire away from his teammate, and so, as he sat, stewing in his hospital bed, the rage and disgust at both Naruto and himself continued to fester and grow. The Avenger's anger finally boiled over when Naruto had come to visit him, acting as cheerful and lighthearted as ever, like nothing had changed between them, but it had. And it was something that would change the history of Konoha forever. At first, it had started as a mere spar on the hospital roof, quickly though, it escalated to an all-out battle, as Sasuke's fury took over and he attempted to remove his blonde obstacle, permanently. Fortunately, Kakashi had stepped in at the last minute and scalded the boys for their recklessness, his disappointment clearly evident, though it had little effect on the breeding Ichiha, who just felt as though Naruto had, once again, shamed his great name. That had been a week ago, but things had not improved. The teens were constantly at each other's throats, usually as a result of Sasuke's cutting and degrading comments that seemed to affect the blonde far more than they ever had in the past. On several occasions, Kakashi had been forced to step in to prevent another altercation, and the cycloptic Jounin had had enough. After their last scuffle, he had warned the boys that next time he would be placing them both on report, something which would be a serious mark against their names and a great hindrance to their progression as Shinobi of Konoha. So, Naruto had decided that he would simply increase the intensity of his idiot mask. It had helped him in the past when things with the villagers had escalated to dangerous levels, and he hoped that it would help him to avoid conflict in his current situation. Fate and a certain Ichiha, however, seemed to have different ideas. The blonde's bright smile slipped slightly as he noticed that neither of his teammates were at the bridge when he arrived, which was unusual, considering both had a tendency to arrive early. His shinobi sixth sense began to tingle, and the blonde subtly slipped into a ready position, not wanting to alert any potential attackers that he was onto their plan. He was, therefore, only slightly caught off guard when a barrage of kunai emerged from the nearby forest, forcing the team to leap backwards to avoid being repeatedly skewered. Scanning the trees for the source of the attack, Naruto's carefully constructed mask shattered when he saw both his teammates standing with proud smirks on their faces. Sakurich Ann. What the hell? Why are you throwing kunai at me? He yelled, pain at being betrayed by the girl he had doted on for years, burning him more than any physical wound. Why? Because you are nothing but a filthy demon. That's why. I've finally been told the truth, you horrible monster. 
And now Sasu-kun and I are going to finish what the Yandame tried to do all those years ago, then we'll be heroes, and Sasu-kun will finally be given the respect and acknowledgement he deserves. Sakura yelled, shattering the tormented boy's fragile heart. For years, he had built walls around himself to keep back the pain and suffering that his cursed life generated, only letting a very select few people peek within those barriers to see the truth that lay within. And in an instant they were ripped away. The years of merciless scorn and torment, of brutal physical and emotional abuse, of debilitating, soul-shattering loneliness, swept over the boy like a raging flood. And leading them all was his newest pain, the betrayal of the only person he had ever allowed himself to love romantically. The one person amongst his age group that he had thought for sure would accept him regardless of what he held, had scorned him, just like all the rest. He couldn't fight back the tears that flowed from his eyes, as his mind was overloaded with all that he had held back throughout his short but agonizing life. Eventually however, one thing began to rise above the rampant tempest that was his current emotional state, rage. Ever since the day he was born Naruto had been battered by hatred and disgust and fear, and once, when he was finally old enough to understand what was happening, he had lashed out against those that had wronged him. He had brutally beaten two much older boys that had been attacking him for using the slight at the public park. By the time he had finally been pulled off them, he was covered in blood, his knuckles were scraped and bleeding, his clothes were dyed red from the spatter that erupted from the children as he pummeled them even after they had long lost consciousness. When he had finally calmed down his rage was replaced by fear and horror, not from the adults that were screaming at him for hurting their angels, but at himself. He had realized something terrifying at that moment, he loved blood. The feeling of it as it spattered on his face and clothes. The smell of it that lingered in his nostrils even after the Anbu had taken him away and rinsed him off. The image of it, flowing and coating the two helpless boys as they lay, broken and destroyed in the middle of the crowded park. He was absolutely intoxicated by it, and that fact scared him more than anything he had ever experienced before. On that day he had vowed to never let his anger get the best of him, out of fear that it would bring back that horrible beast that he had become when it did. And for almost a decade, he had succeeded. Even during his darkest times, his enraged fight with Haku, the frenzied attack on Orochimaru and even his brutal battle with the demonized Gara, he never once let himself go completely. But now, now the dam had broken and he was once again basking in the exhilarating freedom that came with completely letting go of your emotions. Before either of his young attackers could realize what had happened, Naruto had vanished, only to reappear in front of them, barely five feet separating the literally glowing blonde from his surprised and frightened teammates. You have no idea what you have just done. The Jinchuruki growled, his tone displaying a terrifying mix of absolute rage and contemptuous amusement. And what is that Oni dope? Sasu taunted, his Ichiha arrogance too far powerful to be overwhelmed by the terror assaulting his system at the moment. Naruto's eyes never once left the quivering form of his former love as he raised his tightly clenched fist towards the Ichiha. You've set me free. He answered calmly, which again only proceeded to freak out his teammates more. Why you're the Keikai Ubi? Sakura stuttered, all of her previous bravado long since dissolved as the reality of the situation became apparent. Idiot, he always has been the Kai Ubi, he's just finally showing his true colors. Isn't that right you demon scum? Sasu taunted, though his confidence in the situation had also notably decreased. Me? The Kai Ubi? And they call me the dead last. Naruto muttered, giving a grin that was a far cry from the good-natured ones of times past, this one was overflowing with contempt and hatred. I am the container of the Kai Ubi you fucking moron. If I was the real thing, don't you think that I would have slaughtered all of you vile, hate-filled cretins years ago? No, it is not the Kai Ubi you've awakened, it is the real Naruto Uzumaki, and for you too, that is much worse. Sakura's eyes widened in both fear and confusion, while Sasuke's smirk regained some of its confidence. And what could you possible do to us? Even Sakura can beat you, what makes you think you stand a chan? His voice was cut off as the air was driven forcibly from his lungs, shortly before he was violently launched into a tree that had been over 20 feet away. What the hell happened? The fallen Ichiha thought frantically as he gasped for air. He hadn't even seen the blonde move, but he could plainly see that Naruto was standing where he had been, with his clenched fist extended. You punched me? Sasuke yelled, though due to his lack of breath, it came out as more of a gasping yelp. Wow, impressive insight. Did you come up with that all by yourself, or did someone give it to you like they always do? Naruto taunted as he lowered his hand and stood in a relaxed position. You son of a bitch. I'll kill you. Sasuke roared as he got to his feet and charged his teammate, kunai in hand. Naruto avoided the enraged Ichiha's attacks effortlessly for a few moments before catching his wrist and squeezing till they all heard a sharp snap and the kunai fell from the limp hand. Sasuke gritted his teeth to contain the pained scream that was desperately trying to break free from his throat. This is the legacy of the mighty Ichiha clan. PFFT, I've seen more impressive kittens and they aren't given even a hundredth of the advantages you are. Where is that genius intellect? 
Where is your superior Ichiha genes? Where is your all-powerful Sharingan? Naruto taunted, before kicking Sasuke in the chest, sending him careening back into the same tree as before. Tell me Sakura. Is he really that much greater than I am? Is he that much stronger? Or smarter? Or better looking? Please tell me, because, from where I'm standing, it looks like I've got your precious Asu Kun beat in every single way. So why is it that you and all the other pathetic whores of our class threw yourselves at this arrogant sack of inbred clan shit? Naruto sneered, his hauntingly intense sapphire eyes burning a hole in hers with their unyielding gaze. Sakura was speechless. As recently as two days ago if anyone, especially Naruto, had posed such a question to her, she would have literally beat her answer into their skulls. But after what she had just seen and heard, what could she say? Was the Achiha stronger? Obviously not. Was he smarter? Apparently not, since he had picked a fight with what he thought to be Demon, who he knew was stronger than him. Was he even better looking? Taking a hard look at the two teens before her, she was shocked with what she saw. Sasuke's pale and rather demented features were completely overshadowed by the passionate, exotic looks of the sun-kissed blonde, even in his stupid orange outfit, though if what she had been told was true, then he probably didn't have much of a choice about that anyway. His last question hit her like a blow from the goddamn herself, why did she, and everyone else, chase after Sasuke? He wasn't attractive, he's smart, but not practically so, he's supremely arrogant, and has never displayed anything but scorn and contempt for everyone around him, even his superiors. The shocking truth finally leveled itself in the pink-haired girl's mind, there is no justifiable answer for how she and her classmates had acted. It was petty, foolish and incredibly shallow, and it cost them all greatly. Of the 30 students that graduated from their class, only 5 were females, and all of them were at the absolute bottom of the ranks for the practical skills. The only thing any of them achieved in was the theoretical and academic aspects, all of which had proven completely useless the moment they stepped foot outside of the academy grounds. I I don't she muttered weakly, falling to her knees as she realized she had wasted literally half her life. I thought so. At least you can finally see the truth. He said as he turned away from the sobbing girl. Don't turn your back on me, you fucking monster. Sasuke yelled as he again charged Naruto with his kunai drawn. Before he had even taken three steps, the Ichiha felt crippling pain in his healthy wrist, as Naruto savagely kicked it, his chakra enforced blow more than enough to shatter the bones. The blonde then landed a brutal spin kick to his head, fracturing his jaw and once again sending him flying through the air. This time though, the assault did not let up, as the ferocious Jinchuruki appeared behind the airborne Avenger, driving his knees into his back, forcing even the stoic Ichiha to let out a scream of agony. Launching his attacker up off his knee, Naruto proceeded to pummel the arrogant Genin mercilessly for more than a minute, before finally letting his broken and battered form fall limply to the ground. Remember this lesson well, Ichiha. Choose your enemies very carefully, cause not everyone will stand by as you tread on them. Naruto crouched down, bringing his head close to that of the barely conscious Avenger. Consider this your warning. Cross me again, and I will bathe in that famous Ichiha blood of yours. Naruto threatened darkly, the almost giddy anticipation in his tone at the mention of his blood sent shivers down Sasuke's bruised spine. Get away from the Achiha demon. Yelled a new voice as a dozen Anbu appeared from nowhere, surrounding the teens. Naruto looked up at the new arrivals and almost burst with hatred as he saw their blank face masks. The blonde knew all too well what that meant. Taking another anonymous mission without the Hokage's permission, eh? It's been a while since any of you tried this one. So who put you up to it this time? The villagers. The council. Naruto chuckled when he saw one of them flinch slightly at that. The council, huh? That takes me back. Those guys haven't tried a direct attack for nearly five years, though since the sand aim is gone, I'm not really surprised. He shook his head as he stood up to face the squad of shinobi, all of whom could probably beat him in a one-on-one -on -one fight, let alone all twelve. For attacking and grievously wounding a fellow shinobi of Konoha, you are hereby sentenced to death, with the execution to be carried out immediately. The same voice declared, causing Naruto's rage to increase even more. You planned this. You told Sasuke and Sakura about the Kaiubi because you knew they'd attack me, and either they'd kill me or I'd wound them, giving you an excuse to finish the job yourselves. The blonde growled, his body literally trembling from his intense anger. The masked men said no more as they drew their swords and moved to attack the blonde Genin. He managed to avoid the first few swipes and even took one out with a lucky kick that broke his neck, but it wasn't long before his body was being torn apart by the ruthless slaughter. After some time the attack stopped and Naruto fell weakly to his knees, the pain and blood loss killing him, even as his wounds healed surrounded by a faint red glow. He managed to lift his head as one of the men stepped forward, his sword raised to remove the boy's head, a wound not even the Kaiubi could heal. Surprisingly, Naruto did not feel the fear or even the anger that one would assume he would in such a situation. Instead, the blonde allowed himself to be lost in the strange soothing sensation that had started shortly after the attack begun. 
He had no idea what it was or where it was coming from, but he didn't care. It felt like the comfort he yearned for when he was younger. It felt like the family hugs he saw children getting when they were upset. It felt like everything he could ever need and he was more than happy to lose himself to that feeling as his suffering finally drew to a close. He closed his eyes as he waited for the inevitable, reveling in the peace that had somehow settled over him. Suddenly though, the feeling was gone, instantly cut off, leaving in its wake only the rage and sorrow and hatred that had so recently overwhelmed the boy's tortured soul. His eyes snapped open. He would not die with this feeling in his heart. He would continue to live, continue to struggle, until he regained that peace he had momentarily grasped, only then, only when he had recovered whatever that feeling was, would he allow himself to leave this world. Staring his death defiantly in the eyes, he felt new power surge through his body, the intensity and concentration of the power, matched only by what he felt when using the Kyubi's chakra, though the feel of this power was different. The Kyubi's demonic chakra was loaded with animalistic uncontrolled rage, but this, whatever it was, was more controlled, more focused. Also, unlike the Kyubi's chakra which was clearly coming from an outside source, this power was his, it came from within him, and it came for one thing, blood. Whatever the hell this power was, it yearned for blood like a desperate junkie looking for a fix. Naruto had no idea what he was supposed to do with the blood once he got it, all he knew was that he needed it, now. The lead Anbu grinned widely behind his mask as he brought his ninjato down, aiming to remove the head of the demon brat and finally avenge the deaths of his friends and family. His smirk vanished however, when his blade was stopped, caught in the hand of the boy he was trying to execute. He was shocked to find that he couldn't bring his sword free, even as the blood poured from the boy's hand. His shock turned to horror as he noticed that the blood from the wound wasn't falling to the ground or even trailing down the genin's arm, it was traveling up the blade and onto his hands. What the fuck are you doing demon? He yelled, desperately trying to free himself from the blonde's grasp as the blood began to encircle his hands. The blonde said nothing, as everyone, himself included, watched in fascination and horror as the blood began to visibly tighten its hold on the man's hands to the point that there was an audible crack, followed by a scream of pain from the Anbu leader. The blood is acting just like Gara's sand. Naruto thought, the intense bloodlust temporarily overwhelmed by curiosity. I wonder what else it can do. As if reacting to his thoughts, the blood suddenly relinquished its hold on the man's mangled hands and leapt back to Naruto, spreading over his right shoulder like a second skin. But the foo the man tried to exclaim, but was cut off as a spike impaled him between his eyes, shattering his mask and killing him instantly. Staring at the spike intently, Naruto was somehow both shocked and not surprised that it had stretched out from his bloody shoulder. The death of their leader seemed to snap the other Anbu out of their trances as they all took up their fighting stances, with a few of the more reckless ones charging the blonde directly. Naruto's eyes widened in fear, then amazement as the blood spike dissolved back into his shoulder and was joined by the copious amounts of his blood that had been staining his clothing. The increased volume allowed the blood to spread, covering everything from his ribs to his shoulders, front and back. Not bothering to consider this development, the attacking Anbu were caught off guard as the blood lashed out at them, defending perfectly against the multitude of attacks the highly trained shinobi were showering on the boy. Snapping out of his own stupor, Naruto decided to go on the offensive and charged one of his masked attackers, picking up the defeated leader's sword as he ran. His strikes were amateurish at best, but his unpredictability, stamina and intoxicating bloodlust were more than enough to overwhelm the more experienced swordsman. But in moments, the masked nin fell, a gaping slash flowing with blood in his throat. Naruto barely spared the man a glance, too caught up in his quest for blood to realize he had just made his first kill. He found his blood defense had defeated two more Anbu that had apparently tried to attack while he was distracted, only to find themselves gravely wounded and missing limbs as the blood skin formed blades and lashed out at anyone that came close, defending him, even from projectile attacks, without the genin even thinking about it. The defense is automatic, like the Suna demon from the Chunin exams. One of the Anbu yelled after having a barrage of kunai aimed at the boy's blind spot, deflected harmlessly by blood blades. This discovery managed to enter Naruto's mind through the lusty haze and brought a wicked grin to his face as he remembered how difficult it had been for anyone to get past his fellow Jinchuruki's sand defense. His grin only served to unnerve the already rattled Anbu further, which was key in their eventual downfall. As the battle continued and more and more of the masked nin fell without the blonde sustaining so much as a scratch, their attacks and defenses became increasingly sloppy, leaving a plethora of openings, all of which the blonde was all too willing to exploit. Only ten minutes after the bloody battle began, it was over, and Naruto stood in the clearing, surrounded by the bodies, intact or otherwise, of twelve Anbu. 
Once the battle ended and his bloodlust ebbed, the blonde was somewhat surprised that he was not disgusted by the gore-filled scene that lay around him, rather, he found himself intoxicated by the presence of all that blood, as he was all those years ago after his first slaughter, only this time, he wasn't afraid of the feeling, rather, he was fascinated by it. Why am I so attracted to blood? Is it because of the fox or is it due to whatever this weird blood power is? And where the hell did that power come from anyway? I've never been able to do that before, why and how has it awakened now? And what the fuck was the council thinking, sending Sakura and the team as bait to lure me into a trap, those manipulative bastards have gone too damn far this time. He declared mentally as he set off towards the Hokage Tower, absently noting that Sasuke and Sakura had disappeared before the start of the fight. Flashback end, and then I came straight here. Naruto finished, leaving a heavily frowning Tsune to stare at him in silence. The older blonde was awash with a flood of contrasting emotions. She was suspicious and angry at the council and the Achiha, she was saddened and concerned for her surrogate son, and she was frightened and amazed at the new ability the blonde had awakened and its possible implications. Letting out a long sigh, she turned and looked out the window towards the Hokage monument. What would you do, sensei, grandfather, granduncle, Minato? She asked internally, letting her thoughts wander to the great men that had preceded her and how they would have dealt with such a situation. After a few minutes, she turned back to the blonde, who was trying to control the blood that still covered his upper body. I think it'd be best if you left the village for a while. She said calmly, though her expression was anything but. Naruto sighed and nodded, surprising the older woman. I was thinking the same thing. It may not be safe to have me in the village until I get whatever this thing is, under control. And I could defiantly use a break from the villagers and all their bullshit, plus the council won't be able to do shit if I'm not in the village. Tsunade nodded in agreement, shocked by how well the boy was dealing with the situation, though she hid it well. The timing is actually quite good, Jirei will be returning from a mission in a few days, you can go along with him, hell I can probably convince him to take you as his apprentice. As much as I appreciate the offer Bachan, I would prefer to go alone. I've never really had time to be by myself and think about who I am and what I want, without having someone around hassling me or interrupting. I think a trip by myself will be a great help to me figuring out some important things. Plus, the idea of spending a few years with that pervert sounds about as appealing as handing myself over to the villagers, bound and gagged. He said dryly, earning both a chuckle and a frown from the conflicted woman. Okay Naruto. I'll mark it down as a S-rank reconnaissance mission, so nobody will be able to find out where you are or what you're doing, that should keep those pricks on the council off your ass, at least until you come back. Naruto smiled warmly and gave the busty woman a loving hug as she rose to see him out. Thanks so much for this. And I I want you to know that if I ever had a mother, I would want her to be exactly like you. I love you Kachan. He said softly, as both of them began to cry. I love you too, Naruto-kun. Be sure to keep yourself safe out there. I don't think I'd be able to cope if I lost you too. She pleaded desperately. Naruto pulled back from their embrace and looked into his mother's teary, hazel eyes. I promise you, on my dreams and everything that I hold precious, I will return to you. He declared, his voice filled with nothing but love and determination. Tsunade only nodded, not trusting her voice anymore, as the young blonde embraced her one more time and left her office, soon to be leaving her village in her protection. The thought of him alone in the world scared her immensely, but in her heart she knew that no matter what happened in the world, her son always keeps his promises. He would be back, and until that day she would wait and prepare, determined to make the young blonde's life better, and she knew just where to start. Shizun. She yelled, summoning her teary-eyed assistant, who had no doubt been listening in on the conversation. Hi, Tsunade sama the dark-haired woman said as she bowed to her long-time master and companion. Bring me all the hospital records for the three months leading up to the Kaiubi attack, as well as all of Naruto-kun's medical files. I'm going to find my son's parents. It had been more than three years since had begun rejoicing the sudden departure of their resident demon, well most of them did, there were a select few that missed the blonde troublemaker greatly. Amongst them were the Godim Hokage and her assistant, the boy's adoptive mother and sister, the Kanoha 12 minus Sasuke, who were his peers and friends, and the owners and operators of the particular Raymond stand, whose business had plummeted nearly 50% in the boy's absence. All of them waited anxiously for the day when he would return, all of them silently cursing the Hokage, who had not thought to put a time limit on the Genin's mission. It started like any average spring afternoon for the people of Konoha, but that was soon to change, as after three years, two months and fifteen days, Uzumaki Naruto had returned to the village hidden in the leaves, and he didn't come back alone. Izumo and Kitetsu sat at their post in front of the main entrance to their home village, kicking themselves for having woken the Godim from her afternoon nap, the particular mistake that had earned them gate duty for a month. To pass the time, the two incredibly bored Chunin had begun playing I Spy. That was three hours ago. 
Now, Izumo, the slightly less moronic of the pair, was becoming increasingly fed up with his partner's incessant continuing of the childish game. Oh I've got a good one. I spy, with my little eye, something beginning with. God damn it Kitetsu, if you use tree one more time, I swear I am going to rip your he. It's not trees this time, it's something new. Something beginning with F the blue-haired man announced proudly. Sighing and deciding he could humor his longtime friend one more time, Izumo looked around. A foliage? He asked, pointing to the trees lining either side of the road. No. It's got nothing to do with trees. Uh what the hell starts with F? He yelled, his patience for the game having run out a long time ago. Itetsu smirked victoriously. Freaky red guy. He stated, pointing towards three figures that had just become visible down the road, the middle one of which was wearing all red. First of all, you can't use adjectives in I spy, that's cheating you jackass. Second, just because a guy wears all red, doesn't make him freaky. In our business you can't judge people by how they look. Think about guy, if you just looked at him, you'd think he was a demented idiot who I is a demented idiot. Kotetsu replied flatly. Regardless. You can't judge someone just by how they look. Say what you want, that guy is freaky, look at him. Kotetsu declared. Izumo sighed again before taking a better look at the red man. He was a little taller than average, about six feet if he had to guess. He had shaggy blonde hair, with blood red streaks running through it that hung loosely around his head, almost covering his eyes. His clothes, for the most part, looked be standard issue shinobi gear, long, loose pants, a tight long sleeve shirt, and average sandals. The only things that made him stand out were the heavy cloak draped over his shoulders, the mask covering the lower half of his face, and the fact that all of the clothes were crimson, and if you looked closely at them, almost looked like they were compassed entirely of a liquid, rather than any fabric, making it look eerily like he was wearing an outfit made entirely of blood. Okay he is freaky. What the hell is with those clothes? Izumo asked quietly, since the travelers were now within hearing range. They are part of my keke genkai. Freaky red man answered as they strode up to the check-in station. Both Chuan and jumped at the man's deep, gravelly voice. If they were women they may very well have swooned at the sound. Really? And what keke genkai is that? I've never heard of one that involves clothes before. Izumo asked, putting on his serious face in front of the strangers. You don't need to know. Now if you don't mind, we need to be going, we have an appointment with the hokage. Answered the person on Freaky Red Man's left, whose voice revealed her to be a woman, even though nothing could be seen under the heavy cloak and mask that she wore. All that could be seen was her very long crimson hair that reached the entire length of her back. That, combined with the silky, almost regal sound of her voice, instantly led the Chuanin to decide that she was both very hot and very important. I understand the need for secrecy, but all travelers must give their names and purpose of visit before entering the village. Izumo stated firmly, standing up to try and look more intimidating, though it clearly didn't work since the newcomers didn't even twitch. Look you fucking piece of shit, we don't have to answer any of your fucking questions if we don't want to. Now fuck off, we have to see the blonde bitch. The third traveler cursed loudly, her voice also revealing herself to be a woman, though the contrast between her and the other female was like black and white. Her tone was sharp and grating, like someone who had grown up on the streets, as opposed to her companion, who sounded like she was raised in a castle or manor. Her hair, though not too dissimilar to the other woman's shade and length, was obviously less taken care of, as it was rougher and more untamed. Hey I, calm down. We are all friends here, there is no need to be so hostile. The man reproached calmly, making the rude red head take a deep breath and step back from the table. I apologize for my friend, she has a hard time trusting new people. As for our names, this is Taiya chan and Akai-chan, and my name is Yuzumaki Naruto. Both men visibly flinched at his name, and both of the women tensed, as if expecting an attack. I assume that you have returned from your mission then, Yuzumaki-san. Kitetsu said, the reverence in his voice completely unexpected. That is correct. So if you wouldn't mind letting us through, I would like to make my report. He said, unable to keep the confusion and suspicion out of his voice. Of course. Please go right ahead. I'm sure Hokage-sama will be most happy to know that you have returned. Izumo said as he waved them through. The three travelers spared one final wary gaze towards the strange Shuinen before entering the village. A short time later the three red travelers arrived at the Hokage Tower and were met with similar reactions from the staff as they gave their introductions. Wanting to get to the bottom of what was going on, Naruto almost yelled in joy as he set eyes on the familiar face of the Hokage's personal assistant and companion, Shizun Nichin. He called as he bounded up to the woman and wrapped her up in a tight hug, nearly scaring her half to death as she hadn't recognized who was embracing her. Hey, let me down this instant. She yelled, struggling against the large man's powerful hold. Naruto let her down gently and looked at her with sadness and confusion. Shizun Nichin, aren't you happy to see me? 
It only took a moment for the woman to realize who it was that was looking down at her, his sapphire blue eyes, leaving no doubt about his identity. Naruto-kun. She gasped, almost unable to accept the drastic change that her little brother had undergone in only three years. He nodded and was instantly brought back into a hug with a, now crying, woman. It's so good to see you again Naruto-kun. Things just haven't been the same since you left. The tall blonde smiled warmly and rubbed the somewhat hysterical woman's back soothingly, whispering comforting words in her ear. The moment was interrupted by the sound of two angry women clearing their throats loudly. Instantly, Naruto's head snapped up and he looked over to see his two companions glaring at him with barely contained rage. Sweat dropping at their murderous looks, he stepped away from the recovered Shizune and rubbed his head sheepishly. Hey, sorry Akai-chan, Taiya-chan. This is Shizune Nichin, she's Ba-chan's assistant and one of my dearest friends. Shizune Nichin, this is Akai-chan and Taiya-chan there, his girlfriends. Taiya interrupted grumpily. The black-haired woman looked between the two women and Naruto a few times, her mouth open in a shocked gape. They both. She stuttered. It's a long story. Why don't you come in with us when we explain to Bachan, that way you can hear the whole thing. Naruto suggested, walking over to his women and putting an arm around each of them in what he hoped was a placating manner. Shizune gave a nod, and they all entered the Hokage's office, not bothering to knock. Who the hell are you? And what do you think you're doing barging in here like that? Tsunade yelled, her tone somehow even grumpier than Naruto remembered, causing him to sweat drop lightly. I'm offended you don't recognize me, surely I haven't changed that much Kasan. Naruto said with a fake hurt expression that the woman could only identify thanks to years of dealing with a certain mask wearing, porn reading Jounin. And Naruto-kun? She stammered out, already having left the desk and begun inspecting the tall man, moving faster than any of them thought she was still capable. In the flesh. It's good to see you again Kasan. He said with a wide smile. Tsunade said nothing more as she pulled her son into a tight embrace that may have broken bones if it wasn't for his impressive conditioning. He rubbed her back gently as she began to shed tears of joy, holding no shame in her emotional display at seeing her favorite genin back home safely and apparently having grown into a powerful young man if his presence and aura were anything to go by. After a few minutes of quiet assurances and soothing words from the younger blonde, Tsunade regained her composure and stepped away from the young man, wiping her eyes clear of tears as she did so. So Naruto-kun, would you mind telling me why you haven't written for three years? Or how you grew so much in only three years? And who these two people are? Tsunade asked, her stern hokage voice coming back after a brief absence. Naruto sheepishly rubbed the back of his head and ushered for them all to sit down. It's kind of a long story, but I guess it starts with. Flashback, it had been six months since Naruto had left the village hidden in the leaves, and, for the most part, things had been uneventful. He had merely been traveling from town to town, seeing the sights, meeting people and generally enjoying his anonymity. That had not been the case today, however. No, today he had been involved in the most desperate terrifying battle of his life, and he had only just survived. But it was not thanks to his own merits that he had survived, sure his newfound prowess with his blood manipulation was helpful, but he owed his existence to one being, the Kaiubi. Had it not been for his tenant, the 12-year fiasco that was Naruto Uzumaki's life would have come to an end. Deciding that he was not going to be an ungrateful vessel, Naruto began to meditate, using a technique he had discovered to bring himself into the domain of his powerful prisoner. After only a few minutes, the boy found himself in the somewhat familiar tunnels of his mind, ankle deep in that unidentified liquid that he had never gotten around to asking about. Shrugging thoughts of the suspicious fluid out of his mind, Naruto wandered down the paths, following the simultaneously intimidating and comforting sound of the demon's heavy breathing. Hey Fox. He greeted as he entered the large cavern that housed the cage of his prisoner. What do you want human? The enormous fox growled. Relax. I just wanted to say thanks for helping me out back there, I'd have been done if it wasn't for you. Naruto explained, giving a respectful bow that made the ancient demon raise an eyebrow or whatever it had instead of eyebrows. Foolish child. If you had died, I would have gone with you. Besides, I always appreciate the chance to punish you pathetic cretins. The Kaiubi laughed. Punish? What are you talking about? Naruto asked, confused by the demon's choice of words. Before I was sealed into your disgusting little body, I was a servant of Kami, and it was my job to seek out and punish those that had been deemed particularly vile or acting in opposition of Kami's laws. Did you not ever wonder why I attacked your village? Naruto paused to consider this truthfully, he had never thought about the reason why Kaiubi would have attacked his village, it never seemed important, but now that he thought about it, it did matter. Honestly, I never did. Everyone just assumed you were some mindless beast looking for destruction. He replied sheepishly. Foolish humans. Always overlooking the important details in favor of the simplest answer. And you wonder why we call you stupid. The demon muttered as it shook its large head. 
Hey, with all the shit those Dumbass villagers put me through, I'm exactly inclined to disagree, but there are some good people out there. Naruto defended. Perhaps. But, I maintain that the vast majority of your kind are barely above the mindless beasts you call demons. I don't understand, aren't you a demon? Naruto asked, once again confused by the fox. I will be let loose a barking laugh. You humans truly know nothing of the world surrounding you. There are four levels of immortals in this world. The lowest are what are commonly known as demons. These are mostly mindless beasts that wander around, causing mayhem and destruction, possessing humans and the like. Next, there are the greater demons. These are similar to the lower level kind, but are capable of conscious thought and are usually much more powerful. An example of one of these was Mrim, who attacked a country not far from here a few years ago and was sealed by a local priestess. Above them are the demon lords, such as myself and the other Biju, though personally I always thought Shukaku shouldn't have been counted as one of us, the chubby psycho. Naruto cleared his throat, bringing the demon lord out of its mutterings. Anyway, then above us is Kami, who is supremely powerful and can never be defeated blah blah blah. Mind you, that lazy bastard hasn't done anything in more than a millennium, always making us do his dirty work. Naruto sweat dropped at the sight of an immortal fox bitching about its boss like a whiny teenager. He cleared his throat again, bringing the fox back to the topic at hand. Oh and there used to be another level in between us and Kami, the demon royalty, but they were wiped out millennia ago when they tried to overthrow the big boss. Dumbasses. Even if he never does anything, everyone knows you don't screw with the guy that made you, that's just common sense. I see. But, what does this have to do with why you attacked Konoha? Naruto asked. The fox paused for a moment, then let out another barking laugh. Nothing actually. I guess I got a bit sidetracked. It answered simply, causing Naruto to face vault in classic Anime style. So why did you attack Konoha? He asked impatiently. I didn't. Well, not at first. I was sent to take out a few people in your village that had been toying with Kami's laws, trying to gain immortality, and a few other things humans were never meant to mess with. Now usually, if it was only a few weak mortals, I would have gone in, in my human form and done it quietly, but some of the lower demons had been pissing me off recently, so I went in my true form. Naturally, when your stupid villagers saw a gigantic fox heading towards them with an apparent intent to kill, they didn't bother asking questions, they just assumed I was going to kill them all, and they attacked me. Being that I was already pissed off and they were stopping me from completing my objective, I kinder retaliated. And the rest is history, I killed a few hundred of the ninja, then that blonde bastard appeared out of nowhere, next thing I know, there is a bright flash of light, and I'm stuck in this dump. Naruto gaped at the blase looking demon. So you killed hundreds of people and ruined my life because you were pissed off at some lower demons that had been annoying you? The shocked boy yelled. Well when you put it like that, I sound like a total ass, but yeah that's the basic gist of it. To be fair though, if the people I killed were anything like the ignorant bastards that have been torturing you all these years, they got what was coming to them. Kaiubi replied defensively. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for the help and the uh interesting history lesson. But I'll just be on my way. Naruto said as he started to leave his mindscape. Sure thing little one, drop by if you ever want to chat. The fox declared in an eerily chirpy tone. For the next few months, Naruto continued his travels, continually working on increasing his control over his blood ability. In one of his, increasingly common discussions with his tenant, the Kaiubi had suggested that he try keeping the blood attached to his body, so he wouldn't have to keep cutting himself whenever he wanted to use it. Naruto had agreed it was a good idea, but had quickly learned that if he didn't keep the blood in near constant motion, it would dry out and he would be left, caked in a useless rusty brown crust. It had taken him a few weeks to be able to do it subconsciously, but once he did, it proved to be incredibly useful, since it not only made the blood more readily available, but it also served as control training, as he would often practice changing the properties of his weapon, shifting it between its completely liquid and hardened almost metallic states. He had found, during an experimentation session, that he could get the blood to take almost any form or quality, so long as it was attached to him, as soon as the connection was severed, it would revert to its natural, fluid state. This was disappointing as it meant that he couldn't use it as a projectile, and if someone ever managed to get the blood away from him, it would be useless. During his next chat with the Kaiubi, they had discussed this development and decided that he could avoid the projectile limitation by simply increasing his volume of blood, then he would be able to stretch it much further, increasing his range and reducing the need for projectiles. So, under the supervision and advisement of his demonic companion, he had begun bloodletting, as much was safe, and had managed to drastically increase his blood stock, as he'd begun referring to it. This increased capacity brought with it another issue. Previously, when not in use, the blood would remain under his clothes, a sort of second skin that wasn't visible from the outside. 
Now though, there was far too much to be spread over the hidden sections of his body, without making it quite thick, and making him look rather misshapen, with a torso and legs, but lean arms and head. Once again, it was his one of his conversations with the Kaiubi that provided the answer. The fox had jokingly suggested that the blood was similar to its fur, and that he should simply go all natural, and while he had initially disregarded the idea as another of the strangely childish fox's jokes, he had realized that it actually wasn't that bad an idea, and had abruptly left the mindscape to test his theory. He was pleased to find that, after a few failed attempts, he could actually form the blood into what looked and felt just like real clothes, albeit they had to be red, since he couldn't manage to change its color, like he could everything else about it. After playing experimenting with his newfound ability, Naruto finally decided on making only his top out of the liquid and leaving the rest of his outfit real clothes, since he didn't want to be caught without pants if he lost his concentration sometime. As the time passed however, and his store increased even further, he was forced to make additions to his outfit. He started with smaller items, like gloves and sandals, then a mask like Kakashi's, but eventually he simply had too much and was forced to take the final step, replacing his pants, though he always wore real underwear, just in case the worst happened. He had found, much to his surprise, that he felt far more comfortable when wearing his blood clothes than he had ever been in real clothes, almost as if it was only natural for him. Kaiubi suggested it must be a part of his ancestry, since the feeling he described was similar to when it returned to its true form after being in human form for a while. Whilst the idea that this was his natural form intrigued Naruto, he had no way of knowing if it was related to his ancestry, since he had no idea who his ancestors were. Flashback pause. Wait, does that mean that the clothes you are wearing now are all made of blood too? Tsunade interrupted. Naruto nodded as his cloak and top reverted back to their blood shapes and formed into a set of giant bat wings off his back, leaving his muscle torso exposed to the hungry eyes of Akai, Teiya and, surprisingly, Shizune. Well, that answers that. Tsunade muttered, throwing a book at her drooling assistant. Anyway. So after that. Flashback continued. Another few months passed without much of an event, aside from Naruto having to adapt his clothes to facilitate more storage. That is, until the night of October 10th, Naruto's birthday and the 13th anniversary of the Kaiubi's attack on Kanoha. Having been overcome by painful memories of birthdays past, Naruto had sought the company of the being that had become the boy's dearest and closest friend, the Kaiubi. When he walked the familiar pathways of his mind however, something was noticeably different. At first the boy couldn't identify what it was, but after a few moments it struck him, he couldn't hear his friend's deep, soothing breaths. Alarmed and afraid that somehow, something had happened to his companion, Naruto frantically sprinted through the corridors till he found himself in the Kaiubi's chamber, only now, there was no sign of the demon lord, only a tremendous empty cage. Ignoring the nagging voice in the back of his mind that warned it might be a trap, Naruto quickly passed through the enormous gate's bars and found himself, for the first time, inside the cell of his prisoner. It had been an unspoken rule throughout the growth of their friendship that they wouldn't mention either of them entering or exiting the cage, since both knew that it would disrupt the fragile trust that had been built between them. And, since it was always so dark, the blonde boy had never seen inside of the cell that his friend was forced to live in, and now, he almost wished that it had stayed that way. It was completely bare. Containing nothing that could be considered a comfort or source of entertainment, just hard, wet, stone floors, walls and ceiling. There was absolutely nothing in the enormous space except for a small, hunched figure in one of the corners. Taking more notice of the, now screaming, voice in the back of his mind, Naruto approached the figure cautiously, inwardly cursing the lack of light as he couldn't make out the form's features. An obvious response to his thought, an ethereal light swelled in the room, bathing everything in gentle glow, like a candle or fireplace in a dark room. The figure, now revealed to be a beautiful, red-headed woman, flinched at the appearance of the light and spun around to face the surprised Naruto, who couldn't help but stare at the woman's angelic naked form and nine, long, fur-covered tails. Hey Kaiubi? He sputtered disbelievingly. Naruto-kun? She gasped before wrapping her tails around herself for some level of modesty, though it didn't help much as it just made her look more alluring to the shocked teen. W what the hell? Naruto asked dumbly, unable to form his frantic thoughts into a more complex question. So, this is my human form surprise. The woman joked with a nervous chuckle. Naruto just continued to gape at her, his previous question being the most his rebooting mind was capable of. I guess you're a little surprised that I'm a woman, huh? She asked, getting a stiff nod from the blonde who had finally managed to close his mouth. Why? He asked, after regaining more of his consciousness back. Why didn't I tell you? Well, when you first came in, I thought you were going to be like every other ignorant human, so I figured it would be better to deal with you in my fox form, even though this is my natural body. In truth I only used the fox form when I was trying to intimidate people or in a particularly nasty battle. 90% of the time, I chose to stay in this form. 
Do you have any idea how hard it is to live as a hundred foot tall fox? Normal things like walking around or taking a bath are hell, so I usually stayed like this. But then we started to become friends, and I was afraid you would be angry if you found out I've been lying to you this whole time. She said sadly, hanging her head. Naruto smiled and walked over to the gorgeous woman, pulling her into a comforting embrace. And you call us humans stupid. What part of having an unbelievably beautiful naked woman as my best friend was I supposed to be angry about? This is actually a huge relief. For the last couple of months I'd been worried I was turning gay or whatever, it is when you like animals, since I keep having these dreams and fantasies of us in a relationship. Naruto explained with a light chuckle. You're serious? She asked in a surprised tone. Of course. I thought you could read my thoughts, I assumed you knew. No, all the seal lets me do is monitor what is happening right now on the outside. Aside from that in sending my chakra to heal or strengthen you, I can't do anything from in here. She explained. Ami that must be boring, no wonder you're always trying to get me to come in here and talk to you. Naruto exclaimed. I will be pulled back from the embrace and looked away from her container shyly. Actually, that's only part of it, I I really like spending time with you. She admitted sheepishly. Wait, as in, that's right, I like you too. She interrupted. Naruto gaped at the beautiful woman again, unable to comprehend what she had just confessed. As in like, like. He asked, getting a frustrated sigh from the woman, who suddenly turned back to him and locked him in a passionate kiss. Does that answer your question? She asked with a smirk, as she saw his flustered expression. I don't know, you might have to do it again, Kaiubi-chan. He replied with a matching smirk as he snapped out of his daze. Her grin only widened at his playful statement, and she leaned back into his body. Well, if I have to. And for the record, my name is Akai, not Kaiubi. She declared before pulling him into another world-shattering kiss. Flashback pause, Sunade and Shizune gaped at the people in front of them, though they were looking at different people. You kissed the Kai Ubi? Sunade yelled, but she was drowned out by Shizune's even louder scream. The Kai-san is the Kai Ubi? She shrieked, drawing her master's attention before it shifted back to Naruto and his female companions. Yes, but can you keep it down, we're trying to keep it a secret. He replied sternly. Would you mind telling me what the hell you were thinking starting a relationship with her? And why and how she is not sealed inside of you? Tsunade asked, and, though she kept her voice level, everyone could feel the anger radiating off her. Calm down, Tsunade san I assure you I mean you no harm, and even if I did, Narukan is more than powerful enough to restrain me. Akai assured, calming the hokage considerably. Is that true Naruto-kun? Are you more powerful than she is? The blonde Kanoichi asked. Naruto nodded seriously. It's a byproduct of how Akai-chan was released, you see. Flashback continued, it had been three months since Naruto had begun his relationship with his tenant, and in that time they had grown considerably closer emotionally, you can't get closer physically than literally living inside the one you love. As they often did, the couple was passing the time lying on the grassy hills that populated the redesigned cage of the demon lord, simply enjoying each other's company. It sucks we can't do this in the real world. Naruto grumbled, realizing that he would have to leave soon, lest he risk someone finding him and proclaiming him to be in a coma, as had happened quite a few times since their relationship began. True, but we both know the only way for that to happen is if I were somehow let out, and I don't think that damn Yandame seal is going to let that happen anytime soon. Akai replied, snuggling deeper into her man's side as she too realized their time was almost up. That's it. We can remove the seal. Naruto exclaimed, sitting up abruptly and accidentally throwing his love off him. You know we can't do that. We don't know what would happen. We could both die, or even if we didn't, who knows what the influx of demonic chakra would do to you. It's not worth the risk. The redhead reprimanded as she stood up, dusting off the kimono she wore despite Naruto's complaints. Naruto had let the matter drop, or so it seemed, as three days later, Akai woke as her entire domain began to quake and fluctuate wildly, as if it was unstable. Quickly guessing what the problem was, she raced to where the manifestation of the seal was now located and was horrified to find Naruto, writhing in agony on the ground, the torn piece of paper clutched in his hand. Narukun. She screamed as she ran over to his side, wrapping him up in a tight embrace to try and give him some comfort from the obviously excruciating pain. What the hell were you thinking? She yelled as he continued to convulse and tremble. I finally found it again. He muttered before he passed out from the pain, leaving the terrified demoness to cry and pray as everything began to fade. Naruto woke abruptly two weeks later to find himself enveloped in the comforting feeling that he had searched almost a year to find. Turning his head, he was delighted to find the sleeping form of the woman he loved laying next to him, her lithe body draped over his, giving him that indescribable feeling of security and warmth that came from being with the one he loved and who loved him. He had recognized the feeling the first time that he and his tenant had embraced, it was the same one that had soothed him, however briefly, during his fight with the Anbu. 
And now that he had it back, he vowed on his very soul that he would not let anything take that feeling away again, no matter what the cost. So when he had realized that he had an opportunity to set the being that gave him that feeling free, he didn't hesitate for a moment, regardless of the possible costs to himself. He smiled warmly as he saw the sleeping beauty begin to stir, shifting slightly, so that they were eye to eye when her ruby red orbs finally opened. Morning Akai Chan. He said softly, before yelping in pain as she whacked him over the head. You stupid son of a bitch. What the hell were you thinking removing the seal without even telling me? I could have helped you prepare for it better you dumb bastard. She yelled, getting into the mount position and thumping him repeatedly on the chest, or at least she would have, but she found herself completely restrained by vine-like appendages of blood that extended from the blonde's chest. Absently, he noted that his blood had not reacted by itself since that fight, where his demon love had saved him, and wondered why it was doing so now, but shrugged it off when he noticed the half-furious, half-concerned look that Akai was giving him. I know you are upset Akai-chan, but I am not going to apologize because I don't regret what I did. Since my blood is here and so are you, that means that you are on the outside, and, since I don't see Kami yelling at you for slacking at your job, I know we aren't dead. Which means that you are free and we got away without any serious consequences. He declared with a proud smile that quickly faded when he saw her look away from him. What's the matter? He asked, ordering his blood to release its hold on his girlfriend. That's not entirely true. She muttered softly. Naruto gently turned her head to face his and lent in, giving her a chaste but loving kiss. Whatever has or will happen is worth it for this moment. He declared tenderly. She gave a weak smile, but Naruto could tell that she was forcing it. What is this terrible thing that is so bad that it would ruin such a perfect moment? He asked. The red-headed woman sighed and gazed deeply into his eyes. There were some complications. Like what? Naruto asked, curious, but obviously not worried. After you removed the seal, my chakra began flooding your system, as we knew it would, but it your reaction was more intense than I had anticipated. I managed to retain a little less than half of my power as I was ejected from your body, but the rest of it was almost enough to kill you. If I had taken any less you would have died, regardless of your special circumstances. She explained gravely. Naruto creased his brows in confusion. What circumstances? The Kai let out another sigh before taking a calming breath. Your body, unlike a normal human's, was not shredded by the excess of demonic chakra. The only reason that I can think for this would be if you had some kind of natural tolerance for it, and the only way for that to be true is if you have powerful demonic ancestry. What? You mean one of my ancestors was a demon? He asked, surprised by the coincidental information. Yes. But not just any demon. The only way that you would be able to handle my level of demonic chakra would be if the demon was at least as powerful as me. Wait, but that means that it had to be either Kami or you. You're my ancestor. Oh that is fucked up. Deeply disturbed by his feelings for his great 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 grandmother. Me? No, I've never you know, with a human, so it couldn't be me. She assured, getting a relieved sigh from the panicked teen. But if it wasn't you, doesn't that mean that it has to be Kami? That lazy bastard. Please, he's too lazy even to do that, besides, he's above such pleasures or at least that's what he'd like to think, I happen to know that he has a terrible weakness for, focus. You were trying to explain something to me, remember? Naruto interrupted, making the woman blush slightly at getting distracted again. Right, sorry, no what I was thinking was that it would have to have been one of the demon royalty. They were always resistant to Kami's rules, so it's not surprising that they would have a few human descendants running around. Oh I see. But what does any of this really matter? I mean, it's not like I'm a demon, so I can't be royalty, right? Naruto's cheerful grin died when she once again looked away from him. Actually, that's what I was getting to. When my demonic chakra overloaded your system, it apparently awakened your ancient demonic heritage, transforming you into a full demon. Akai explained fearfully, terrified of what his possible reaction might be. She was caught completely off guard however, when he cheered loudly and leapt to his feet, accidentally throwing her to the ground in the process. Ah, what the hell? She yelled in surprise, only her demonic reflexes saving her from landing on her ass. Sorry, Akai-chan, I just wanted to see if I got any cool tales or stuff like yours. He explained, rubbing the back of his head sheepishly. I'm not sure. When I woke up we were both in our full human forms, though I have no idea how, so I haven't seen your true form. I doubt it'll be like mine though, the Bijuu are the only demons that have animal features, the royalty were all completely unique beings. I seem to remember one of them being red and being able to manipulate his body, which is somewhat similar to your blood ability, so maybe he was your ancestor. If that's true, it's probable that you will look like him. 
which frankly, would be a good thing, he was probably the most normal looking of them, the rest were freaks with five legs and crazy crap like that. She said, striking a thinking pose as she tried to remember the long lost memories. Well, there's no point in speculating, how do I transform? He asked, clearly eager to see his new form. It's easy, just oh, I didn't think of that. She said suddenly. What? He asked impatiently. Well, the way I transform is to imagine my other form, then will it to become real. But I don't know what my true form looks like. Naruto exclaimed, getting a nod from the demoness. Well, your ancestor, from what I remember, was completely red, which, assuming his abilities were similar to yours, implies that he covered himself in his blood. Maybe you should try that. She suggested with a shrug. Naruto thought about it for a moment before deciding that it was worth a try. He tried to focus on his blood as he used to, and was pleased to find that it worked much faster and much easier, though it caught him off guard at first, since he was suddenly being swallowed by the crimson liquid. Stifling a scream as it crept further up his face than ever before, he almost lost composure as it completely covered him, leaving nothing but a scarlet silhouette. After a few moments of nothing happening, he was about to pull it off when he was suddenly overcome with a wave of new sensations, as his body began to warp and shift. His bones and muscles began to tear and reform, considerably larger and longer than before. His eyes changed completely, becoming completely white before they flattened and stretched, becoming egg-shaped and roughly the size of his palm. His mouth opened as he let out a scream, only it stretched and widened to the point that he could probably eat a chicken whole. And his teeth all grew, becoming sharper and longer, reminiscent of the Kai's in her fox form, only they were all long, not just the canines. Even his tongue changed, becoming much longer and round, till it looked almost like a slimy rat tail. After almost a full minute of the agonizing transformation, it ended and the new, fully demonized Naruto stood panting in front of his shocked love. What happened? He asked, his voice completely different, sounding like a more feral version of Akai's demonic growl. You've finally taken your true form. Akai said she walked over to him and pulled him into a comforting hug. Everything is different. He gasped as he took in the world through his new senses. His eyesight had changed dramatically, he could now see a much wider range, and everything was in much sharper focus, even things that he wouldn't have been able to see previously, like the individual leaves on a tree that was more than a hundred meters away. They also seemed to be drawn to movement, as he suddenly focused sharply on a deer as it leapt out of the tree line into the clearing their camp was set up next to. His senses of smell and hearing were both also greatly improved, and also seemed to focus on particular sensations, as he smelt the deer and heard its heart beating. One thought was heard in the new demon's head as he took in his environment. I'm a predator. He declared. That's right. You're a demon now. That means that you are the top of the food chain, and your senses and instincts are programmed as such. But, you must learn to control those instincts, if you do not, you will become no better than the mindless beasts of the lowest levels. Naruto nodded his head, fighting the powerful urge to slaughter the innocent animal. Slowly, he turned his head towards his love, but this proved to be a mistake as he was almost overcome with even more powerful urges. One by one his senses locked onto her, and he was nearly overcome by it all. Her heavenly, animalistic scent, the glistening sweat that trailed down her gorgeous curves, the strangely enticing sound of her strong, calm heartbeat, he felt for the first time that he was truly noticing her, and it was pushing him over the edge. Noticing that his intense study seemed to be locked onto herself, Akai didn't have to struggle to guess at what was happening. Fight it Narukun. You aren't an animal, you're better than this. She declared, but even the movement of her lips and the glimpses of her sweet tongue were too much, and the new demon let out a mighty roar before stalking towards what his instincts were loudly declaring, his mate. Now being that she was far more experienced and compass than the young man approaching her, she could have overcome their power discrepancy and restrained him, but for the life of her, she couldn't find the will. She wanted this just as badly as he did, and she was sick of fighting her instincts when it came to the man that had wholly claimed her heart. So instead of continuing the charade of disinterest, she reverted to her own demonic form, letting out a howl of reply as her teeth, nails and ears became beastly, and she sprouted four wildly swinging tails, shredding her robe in the process. His mouth hung open as his heightened senses took in all that was Akai, easily the single most beautiful creature the world had ever known, her perfect pert breasts, her tiny rose-colored nipples, her tight flat stomach, her flashback paws. Okay, I don't think we need to hear any more about that part of the story. Tsune declared, ignoring the disappointed groans from the three other women in the room. Ah, right. Sorry, Kasan. Okay, so it was about a week later that we got control. A week. Tsune yelled, sparing only a glance to her apprentice, who had fainted with a perverted grin and nosebleed. What can I say, demons do it right. Akai declared proudly, getting a shake of the head from Tsune. Anyway, so what happened next? The Hokage asked, not comfortable with the inappropriate thoughts this conversation was digging up about her son. Well, like I said, it was about a week later. 
flashback continue, having finally regained control of their urges, they decided that they needed to spend time exploring and mastering any new abilities that the transformation may have given the blonde. They had discovered that in his full demon form, as they had labeled it, it was as if his entire body was compassed purely of blood. This meant that he could manipulate his entire body, not just the blood that covered it, as he was limited previously. The implications of this trait were not lost on either of them, and they spent almost an entire day exploring everything that this meant for the new demon. They had started with simple things, like extending his fingers, then arms, but it quickly moved right up to completely reshaping his body, he found that he could essentially transform into anything. Now this may not sound too impressive, considering one of the most basic ninjutsu is the henge technique, but unlike the henge, which is just an illusion, Naruto could physically change into anything. This meant that he could transform into a bird and actually be able to fly, or into a fish and actually be able to breathe underwater, granted it would be a red fish of roughly his dimensions with weird eyes, but still. They also found that he had near-perfect regenerative ability, since as long as it was still attached to his body, he could merely reshape the damaged part without the damage, and on the off chance that something was actually severed from his body, if he re-established physical contact with it, he could absorb it back into his body and reform whatever was removed. Whilst Naruto had taken this knowledge to presume that he was immortal, Akai had quickly reminded him that they had not tried removing his head, and it was possible that doing so would likely kill even him. He had replied by absorbing his head into his body and dancing around like a headless idiot, inwardly shouting about how he was immortal. After she had regained his attention by whacking him where his head used to be, he calmed down, and she explained that, whilst demons may be very hard to kill, they are not immortal, so he should not become careless. He promised to do so and retracted his head again into what he had jokingly labeled his defensive mode. It was a few days later when the demonic couple had decided to move on. Deciding that it was best to travel in their human forms, they each transformed, but as the blood skin pulled away from Naruto's head, they were surprised to find that he did not revert back to his previous size, but instead only shrank slightly to a six-foot-tall muscular man, not quite as large as the six-five demon form, but considerably taller than his pre-demon self. Shrugging it off as a good thing, they decided why it didn't really matter, and set off on their way. A short time later, they found themselves in a small village, sitting in a restaurant eating a quiet meal, when they overheard an interesting conversation. Did you hear that the last Ichiha has left Kanoha? A random civilian asked the man next to him, instantly gaining the attention of the demon couple that were sitting nearby. It's not really surprising after what that crazy bitch of a hokage did to him. I heard that she had his bloodline and chakra sealed so that he couldn't be a ninja anymore, then she had him locked up. Can you imagine doing that to the last Ichiha and just cause he tried to save them from some demon that had been attacking the villagers? I tell you, this is why they should never have let a woman into a position with that much power, they're too easily swayed. The second man declared with a disgusted shake of his head. Flashback pause, he said what? Tsunade yelled as she stood, slamming her fist into her desk and almost splitting it in half. Easy, Kasan. I handled the situation. Naruto declared with a sadistic smirk. Flashback continue. Naturally, after the comments about his mother, Akai was forced to physically restrain her blonde lover from literally ripping the stupid man apart, but after his sexist statement, her grip somehow slipped and the full fury of the new demon was unloaded on the fat little man. After a few minutes, when there was little more than a red smudge where the man once sat, Akai decided that he had had enough. Grabbing her man by his blood-coated arm, she pulled him over to where the man's companion sat, quivering in a puddle of his excrement and his friend's entrails. Now, if you would be so kind as to tell me where the little Ichiha trader went, I would appreciate that greatly. Akai purred, causing the shocked man to stare at her intently, the faintest hint of lust apparent in his disgusted gaze, but it was more than enough. Before he knew what had happened, his body was covered up to the neck in what appeared to be a giant fist made of blood that jerked him into the air, slamming him into the ceiling before beginning to constrict, cutting off his air and cracking several bones. Narukun, you can't kill him yet, we need to know where the Achiha went so we can pay him a visit. The demoness cooed as she put a calming hand on her demonic love. Naruto looked back at her, his human form's blue eyes gazing intently into her blood-red ones. Fine, but the next guy to look at you like that is getting squished, I've always wanted to see why Gara liked that technique so much. The blonde declared as he pulled back his blood, sending it back to his body, where it reformed the cloak he had started wearing, since the demonization had nearly doubled his store. Now, where did he go? Akai asked again, fighting back a snigger at seeing not a trace of lust in the man's eyes. H he went to a Togakur, the Odakage sent his personal bodyguards to break him out of prison and escort him back to the village. Apparently all of them were killed when the Hokage sent out a squad of the Ichiha's classmates after him. They all came back heavily wounded and empty-handed however, so everyone assumed that he got away. The man replied, forcibly getting rid of the nervous stutter when he saw that it seemed to anger the strange beauty in front of him. 
So the Baka team actually went to the snake fucker. I guess we should go pay them a visit, eh Kai-chan? Naruto asked with a grin that made the terrified civilian faint. After a few weeks of travel and some advanced interrogation of a few Odonin they stumbled across, the demonic couple finally found themselves at the entrance to the bunker that currently contained Orochimaru and his latest love Sla. Apprentice. So, what do you reckon Akai-chan, silent and stealthy, or loud and nasty? Naruto asked as he looked over the inconspicuous hole in the ground that was the entrance to Atagakur. The ancient demoness struck a thoughtful pose for a few moments before grinning widely. You know that stealthy was never my style, and it certainly isn't yours, let's go loud and nasty. She declared as she shifted to her true form, gaining a wicked grin from her lover as he did the same. Man that feels better. I totally get what you meant when you said it sucks to be a human, I feel so weak in that form. Naruto declared as he rolled his joints, though it was impossible for them to become stiff in this form. Akai just smirked as she too stretched her new appendages. Told ya. Now let's get to this. If I'm forced to look at that sexy red ass of yours much longer, we're gonna get distracted again. She purred as she leapt into the hole, a chorus of quick screams rising shortly after. Music to my ears. Naruto sang as he shifted his form slightly before following after her, not wanting to get his ample frame stuck in the narrow tunnel. His feet hit ground after a short fall, and his impressive demonic eyes revealed a small tunnel, currently containing his love and two dead Chunin. You didn't save one for me. He whined, a strangely terrifying sound considering his demonic voice. You can have the next ones. She replied, somewhat disturbed by his vicious mouth pouting. Yay. He squealed like a teenage girl. A big, red, demonic teenage girl. Shaking her head at his silly antics, she pointed down one of the three passageways. That one has the Ichiha scent. Naruto's foolish childlike persona was instantly replaced with that of a seasoned warrior as he stopped jumping and gave her a serious nod before starting down the tunnel. After a few minutes and a few more pathetic guards, they found a large steel door which the Ichiha sent disappeared behind. This must be the team's room. The snake fucker would want the best security on his precious Asu-kun. Kami the similarities between him and the Kanoha council are disgusting. Naruto muttered as two three-foot-long blades sprouted from each of his forearms, the sharp edge running from past his elbow to a foot past his fingertips, where they ended in a vicious serrated curve. Without delay, he slammed his fists into the top of the door, the four blades penetrating the thick steel-like water. He then dragged his hands downwards till they met the floor, leaving the heavy door sitting in five strips, the middle ones falling limply forward as their support was severed. Well that was unnecessarily flashy. Akai said flatly as the heavy doors fell with a loud crash. You know me, I like to make an entrance. Naruto replied with a grin as he stepped through the hole. As soon as he passed through the doorway the sound of a thousand birds chirping erupted in the demon's ears and he felt a burning sensation in his abdomen. Looking down, Naruto found the, now, relatively small form of his former teammate, the Ichiha's hand up to the elbow in the red flesh of his body. Well hello to you too, team. Naruto growled, not looking bothered by the limb embedded in his torso. What the hell are you? Sasuke shrieked as he tried to pull his arm back, only to find that the strange red flesh was gripping onto his arm, holding him firmly in place. Now this is a familiar scene. Isn't this what happened the last time you tried that attack on a demon? Of course that was just a weakling Ichibi, but still, you can't help but laugh at the symmetry, hey team? Naruto laughed, his demonic voice sending chills down the spine of the terrified Avenger. How do you know about that? Sasuke asked, managing to keep the fear out of his voice by replacing it with arrogant indifference. You don't recognize me? Team I'm hurt. And after all that time we spent together. That mission to wave, where I saved your ass. The forest of death, where I saved your ass. The Odo invasion, where I saved your ass. How about when you tried to kill me before our team meeting a year ago? You really don't remember me, Sasuke team? Naruto growled, his killer intent flooding the room and making the young traitor fall to his knees. Then Naruto? That's right. Now what's this I hear about you turning traitor? Naruto asked, his killer intent increasing even more, forcing the Ichiha to struggle for his breaths. Why you can't kill em me? The Sea Council W will end never, let why you see come be back. Sasuke threatened, though the effect was largely reduced by the fact that he was gasping for every breath and stuttering in terror. You know what? You're right. The demon declared, reigning in his killing intent, getting two relieved sighs. Naruto paused, too. He thought as he looked around, searching for the source of the other noise. When he found it his killer intent flared even more than before, though this time it was focused solely on the Ichiha, the horror of the experience completely overwhelming anything he had felt from Orochimaru or even his brother. In the corner of the room, chained to the wall and completely naked, was the broken form of a teenage girl. She didn't look much older than 15, but it was hard to tell since her body was littered with cuts and large bruises. From her disheveled and malnourished state, it was easy to tell that she had been there for some time, a few weeks at least. 
Her hair, which was a paler red than Akai's, was matted and even looked to be burned in some places. In short, the poor girl looked like she had been through hell and back in a cage full of wild beasts, and the one responsible was trembling in front of him, totally defenseless. It would be so easy. Just a simple flick of his wrist and this monster in human flesh would be wiped from the earth. But that wouldn't be justice. There was no justice here. Regardless of what happened to the Acha, nothing would repair or compensate the damage that the sick little fuck had done to that poor girl, and Naruto knew it. It was that thought alone that saved Sasuke's life that day, but it didn't save his arm. Without hesitation, Naruto constricted the flesh around the raven-haired traitor's arm, grinding it into complete nothingness, leaving not even a fragment intact, as he pulled the three-inch stump that used to be his right arm away from the furious demon. It took several moments for the truth to set in before he began to scream, his shocked mind overloaded briefly, before acknowledging that he was in tremendous pain. Naruto grabbed the shrieking Ichiha by his collar and raised him to eye level, staring silently into the teary, pain-filled eyes of the Avenger, before he threw him through the hole in the door and into the wall across the corridor, fracturing his spine, but somehow leaving him conscious. The Kai, who had been waiting in the hallway and had only narrowly avoided being hit by the flying traitor, poked her head through the door to see what had upset her man so much. After a few moments her eyes settled on the frail form in the corner, and if it wasn't for the maternal instincts that every female, human, demon or animal has, she would have returned to the hall and slaughtered the Achiha in ways that would make the most depraved nightmares of Arachimaru look like child's play. But as it was, she, instead rushed over the girl's side, effortlessly breaking her restraints and bringing her into a comforting embrace, thankful that the girl recognized her as a friend and didn't flinch away from the contact as many would have. Carefully, so as to not aggravate her countless wounds, Akai picked the girl up bridal style and turned to her lover. No words were shared between the two, but the look they shared said everything that needed to be said. They were taking the girl with them after they had destroyed this horrible place and everyone in it. Only the Achiha would survive, but his punishment would far outweigh that given to the rest of those that they came across. And so it was. Akai created a cage bunshin, which left with the girl while the original and her lover slaughtered everyone even close to that compound. When they finally finished, the demoness shifted to her full fox form and leveled the structure, leaving nothing but a smoking crater and a horrible stench of mass murder. Flashback end. The office fell silent as everyone thought about what had been said. The only one who moved was Naruto as he pulled the trembling form of Teia into a comforting embrace, rubbing her back and whispering into her ear words that no one else could hear. The girl. It was her. Tsunade asked quietly, getting a nod from Akai, who was also rubbing the young woman's back. After a few minutes, Tei regained her composure, and Naruto spoke up again, clasping her hand as she pulled away from him. After that, we brought the Achiha back here, though with a few modifications, as I'm sure you know. Naruto declared, looking at his mother who gave a serious nod. So it really was you that did that to him? We had thought he had gone mad when we found him, missing his arms, eyes and reproductive organs, ranting about how demons stole his vengeance. Tsunade explained, if I had known what the sick bastard had done, I never would have saved him saved him? Akai asked. Tsunade fought back an angry growl. The council forced me to perform several transplants, giving him the latest prosthetics arms from Suna, and they even made me give him Kakashi Sharingan, saying that it should be with one who truly deserved it, whatever the fuck that is supposed to mean. I fought tooth and nail against it, but Kakashi actually agreed to the transfer, something about a guilty conscience from way back, so I didn't really have any excuse not to do it. Especially considering we were told that he had been captured and held as a prisoner by Rachimaru, had I known the truth, I'd have let the bastard wander around blind and armless. At least that filthy bloodline will die with him. Naruto spat, his opinion regarding the Ichiha clan as a whole well established to all those present. Tsunade gave a slight nod. Not that it has stopped the stupid bastards from trying. They even put the cry into effect on him and got him married to the Yamanaka girl and some of the other whiny bitches of your age group, seven in total and not one of them would listen to me when I said that he was damaged beyond repair in that area. Stupid fangirls, serves them right. She muttered, getting nods of agreement from everyone present and conscious, since Shizun was still passed out on the floor in a lusty haze. So what happened after you dropped the prick off? Tsunade asked, getting back on track. Well, after we had given Teia chan Wait. Your name is Teia. As in the same Teia that was part of the Odo 4 and took Sasuke and put up the barrier that stopped anyone from helping the Sandame. Tsunade yelled, recognizing the girl from the description Shikamaru and Tamari had given after they returned from the failed retrieval mission. That's right. And I'm sorry for what I did, but I had no choice. Arachimaru would have killed me if I refused an order, and I was given to the Achiha after I was defeated by that blonde bitch from Suna and that lazy fuck with a pineapple head. The fiery red head replied before the Hokage leapt to her feet and made to charge her. 
Before she even took the first step however, Sunaid found herself being hugged restrained by the impressively powerful arms of her son. I can't let you hurt her Ka-san. chan may have done some horrible things, but they were not by her choice, and she has already paid more than enough for mistakes. I love her, and I will not allow anyone to hurt her, even you. He declared firmly as the irate blonde woman struggled fruitlessly against his grasp. After a few moments, the word sunk in, and the Hokage stopped struggling and took a deep calming breath. You're right. Even after what she did, she has suffered enough. She stated as she walked back to her chair and sat down. Now, what is this about you loving her? I thought you were with Kentucky Akai-san. Tsunade asked, barely remembering the demoness's true name. I am and I do. After Taya chan had been traveling with us for a few months we started to grow close and eventually fell in love. Naturally it was a bit difficult at first, but we've gotten used to it and now we're just a big happy family, right ladies? Naruto asked, throwing an arm around each of his women, who both smiled and shook their heads at his childish enthusiasm. I see. Is there anything else I should know about? Tsunade asked wearily, the emotionally turbulent and excessive number of shocks had taken their toll on the aging woman. Um, not really. For the last year or so we just traveled around, doing odd jobs here and there. Nothing too exciting. Naruto replied, getting a nod from his mother. Well that's good. Why don't we call it a day? You three come back tomorrow and we can look into getting you citizenship and a few other things that I have to give you. The blonde Hokage said as she gave her son one more hug before walking them to the door. Sure thing Ka-san, we'll see you then. Oh, by the way, you wouldn't happen to know where the teen would be, would you? I think we should pay him a little visit. Naruto asked with a sadistic smirk that was quickly matched by the women around him. That sounds lovely. He's usually at your team's old training grounds. The council forced Kakashi to be his private tutor so that he can get the power to avenge his clan and all that shit. They spend most of the... She trailed off when she realized that the three people in front of her had cracked up laughing. What? She asked, not seeing the joke. You remember that really nasty fight that I had where Akai-chan saved me and we started to become friends? Naruto asked, getting a nod from his mother. I was fighting Itachi and Kisum. I managed to catch Kisum by surprise with a blood blade. But then Itachi used Tsukiyomi on me. But it backfired and he ended up in Akai's cage. The look on his face before she crushed him was priceless. Naruto declared as they all started laughing. Wait, so you mean he's been training non-stop for the last year and the guy he wants to kill has been dead for three years? Oh you have to let me be there when you tell him, the look on his face is guaranteed to be incredible. Tsunade declared as she realized what they were saying. It's a deal, Ka-san. For now though, we just want to have some fun with him. See you tomorrow. He yelled as he led his lovers out of the office, all of them sporting wicked grins. Why didn't you tell him? A voice called out after Tsunade had closed the door. The blonde turned around to find her assistant glaring at her, though the effect was reduced by the trail of dry blood from her nose. I'll tell him tomorrow. I wanted them to have one peaceful day in the village before everything goes to shit. After they had left the Hokage's office, Naruto and his companions headed straight for the old Team 7 training grounds, eager to catch up with the literal Astache. When they arrived, they found a scene that sat in the hazy middle ground between infuriating and disgusting. In the middle of the training ground, performing one technique after the other, was Kakashi Haddock, his hideate now level across his forehead, with an eye patch covering his left eye. This was not what made the three newcomers angry however, it was the fact that, standing a few feet away from him, copying every technique with his donated eye, was Sasuke Chiha, a superior smirk plastered across his, lightly scarred face. Is this how you always trained when we weren't around Kakashi, or is this a new thing? Naruto asked as they walked up. They would have cheered at the terrified expression on the Ichiha's face if they weren't so pissed off at the moment. Then Naruto. The silver-haired Jounin muttered, his remaining eye widening at the drastic change that had overcome his student. Hey Kakashi. I'd ask how you've been, but judging from the look of things I can take a guess. Naruto sneered, not even glancing at the seething Ichiha. Naruto, what the hell happened to you? Kakashi asked, still unable to comprehend that this was his student. Let's just say a lot and leave it at that. What happened to you? I mean you were always a bit of an Ichiha brown noser, but giving him your eye and then allowing yourself to be involved in this repulsive training, I never thought you would sink this low. Kakashi wanted to defend himself but knew that he couldn't. The fact of the matter was that Naruto was absolutely correct, he had fallen, and he had fallen a long way. I know. He muttered wearily, looking away from the blonde, unable to hold his gaze any longer. And stop. You may not be able to take back all the things you gave the arrogant sack of shit, but you can stop giving him more. Tei yelled, frustrated by the legendary shinobi's pitiable behavior. Don't you dare talk about Sasu-kun like that. Screeched a voice from nearby. 
Turning towards the source, Naruto couldn't help but sigh at the appearance of Ino and several other women, presumable Sasuke's other wives, who were all sporting outraged expressions and stalking towards them in what was probably supposed to be a threatening manner. Of course none of them were even slightly intimidated by the crowd of hysterical fangirls. What the fuck do you whores want? Tai yelled, causing Naruto to sigh again, since he knew what was coming. What did you call you s? The blonde banshee shrieked, causing Naruto and Akai to wince and rub their sensitive ears. For the love of all things holy would you shut the fuck up. Naruto roared, subconsciously releasing a tiny amount of his demonic aura, though it was more than enough to send the Kinoichi to their knees, gasping for breath. You've got to be kidding me. The blonde demon murmured as he realized what had happened, before reigning in the pressure and getting relieved gasps from the pathetic women. See this is why I hate fangirls. They are obviously disgustingly weak and yet they are giving the same label as real Kinoichi like us. Tei spat, getting a smile from Naruto for not swearing in two whole sentences. Bitches. She added, making his smile drop and him shake his head lightly. Who are you calling weak Ino yelled as she charged the reteed, only to have her fist caught and used in a simple throw that sent her flying back to the crowd of stunned girls. You, you wretched gaping cunts. It's useless pieces of shit like you that make it so hard to be taken seriously as a kanoichi. Now get the fuck out of here before I lose my patience and show you what a real ninja can do. The former Odonin threatened darkly, terrifying the women who all looked at Sasuke to defend them. What are you looking at him for? I'll kick his eunuch ass too if you don't get the fuck out of here. Sasuke looked as though he was going to the retaliate to the remark, but one look from Naruto was more than enough to vanquish any objections the targetless Avenger may have had. Ino and the other women left in a huff, obviously upset by their husband's indifference, though it was hardly the first time that such a thing had happened, rather it occurred almost daily whenever they met the Hokage or any of the Rookie 12, who all criticized the women for blindly following the traitor simply because of his name. Once they had left, Naruto put a comforting hand on Teiya's shoulder, calming down the fiery woman and drawing a chuckle from the Ichiha. You have something to say, team? Naruto yelled, startling Kakashi, but not Sasuke, whose Ichiha arrogance and pride were overwhelming his sense of self-preservation again. I just think it's funny how you're always going after my sloppy seconds, first that idiot Sakura, now this filthy slew his vile taunting was cut off as he had a fist rammed into his stomach, dropping him to his knees, where he spat up a considerable amount of blood. Naruto said nothing as he removed his fist, then spun and delivered a brutal heel kick to the downed Ichiha's face, sending him skipping along the ground like a stone on a lake. Sasuke had barely skidded to a halt when he felt and heard the enraged blonde drive his knees into his back, resounding with a sickening crack. Still perched on his former teammate's spine, Naruto pulled the arrogant fool's head up by his hair till there was another snap and the blonde could whisper directly into his ear. Remember this well, Ichiha. I may have spared your life that day, but since then, it belongs to me, and should I or any of my friends ever feel the need, I will not hesitate to take what I let you keep. Naruto then released his head, letting it fall back into the dirt. Let's have a little reenactment, what do you think team? You will remember this, it's what happened the first time you used that disgusting curse mark of yours. Sasuke's eyes widened as he remembered what he had done in the forest of death while he was caught up in the power of the curse mark. Why you can't? He gasped weakly, finding it difficult to breathe with a large blonde still kneeling on his back. Oh, but I can. Now, what was it you said? Oh yes. You seem very proud of these arms. Naruto declared with a smirk as he grabbed onto the Ichiha's arms firmly. Naruto stop. Kakashi yelled, finally snapping out of his stupor. Naruto turned and glared at him, funny that you should take the place of the whiny fangirl in this reenactment Kakashi, since you have become little more than that. He spat as he began to raise Sasuke's arms, easily overcoming the minute resistance he tried to put up. Naruto if you don't stop, I'll have to stop you. The Jounin yelled, getting into a ready stance. The blonde continued to raise the arms till his prisoner let out a pained scream before he abruptly let them go, the whole time staring his former sensei in the eyes. Getting up with one final application of pressure into the raven-haired boy's back, Naruto said nothing as he walked over to his loves and walked away, the women following, each offering a glare at the down teen before they left. After the Ichiha incident, the new arrivals had visited Naruto's favorite restaurant, all of them basking in the pleasant atmosphere that had been largely missing since their return to Konoha. After quite a few hours in the small Raymond stand, they had left for the hotel they would be staying until they could find somewhere more permanent to stay. The following morning they were making the trek to the Hokage's office, all speculating about what the busty blonde could want to tell them, and coming up with a wide variety of possibilities, from her having secretly married Jureya to announcing that he was officially her successor to the Hokage, but after a few minutes they decided that speculation was pointless and just walked in comfortable silence that came with having been together for so long. When they arrived, they were immediately on guard as Shizun led them away from Tsunade's office and to the conference room of the village council. What are we doing here Nichen? 
Naruto asked, confused and worried about the unexpected change of locations. Sorry Naruto-kun, but Tsunade Sama said that the announcement she had to make to the three OU involved the council, so it has to be done here. The black-haired woman consoled, giving him a hug and ignoring the slight growls that came from the two women standing behind them. Naruto took a breath as they entered the large room, bracing himself for what was sure to be a troublesome meeting. Morning Kasan, counselors. The blonde greeted as he sat down at the long table, the council on one side, Tsunade at the head and Naruto's party on the other side. Thank you for coming, Naruto-kun, Akai-san, Teiya-san. As I told you yesterday, I have a few things that I have to tell you. Unfortunately, due to their nature, I have to include the council in this meeting. The Hokage explained, getting a small smile from Naruto and a collective frown from the council, utter lack of respect and complacent tone. Simply put, the reason that I have brought you here is because while you were away I undertook some extensive research and managed to uncover who Naruto's parents were. She announced, getting shocked gasps from everyone but Shizun, who already knew. What? How? The Sandame always told me that there was no way to know who my parents were. Naruto yelled. I'm sorry Naruto, but it seems as though the Sandame himself was the one who covered it up, which is why it was so hard to find out who they were. Tsunade explained, flinching at the look of betrayal that appeared on her son's face. Before you jump to conclusions, I think you should know that he did it to protect you. Your parents, particularly your father, were very prominent figures in the shinobi world, and they both had many enemies who wouldn't have hesitated to attack you if they knew. Oh yes, because my childhood was so goddamn peaceful as it was. Naruto roared, his demonic aura slipping free and causing the civilian contingent of the council to gasp for breath. The Kai grabbed onto the enraged demon's hand and gave it a comforting squeeze. Calm down Narukun. At least let Tsunade san finish, then we'll decide on how to react. She whispered into his ear. Naruto took a deep breath and nodded, but did not pull in his aura, perfectly content to let the people who had tormented him for years sweat. As I was saying, Saratobi sensei believed that by keeping your parentage a secret, he was protecting you, so he was very thorough in hiding any and all evidence. After searching around in the hospital records for ages, I managed to find that there were only six of women who were pregnant at the time of the Kaiubi attack, and of them, four of the children are accounted for, which left only two possible candidates for your parents. Kenji and Shima Yazuki, a black civilian couple, or Minato and Kishina Namikas, the Yandame and his wife. She explained with a grin at the gaping faces of everyone present, who were staring at Naruto, as if he had just admitted to being the Sandame's grandmother. No fucking way. Tei exclaimed, pretty much summarizing the thoughts of everyone present. Are, are you sure, Kasan? Naruto asked quietly. Tsunade nodded. I'm positive. I dug further and found your birth certificate and even ran some DNA tests on samples we had from you and the Yandame, and it was positive, there is no denying it, you are the son of Kanoha's most powerful Hokage. Naruto looked to the women that he called his family. Tsunade and Shizun were both wearing warm but concerned smiles, Tei still looked like she couldn't believe it, and Akai looked absolutely miserable. Akai Chan, what's the matter? I'm so sorry, Narukun, I should have figured this out years ago. It only makes sense that the Yandane would use his own son, and now that I think about it, the two of you are practically identical if you took away my influence. I should ha. It doesn't matter, Akai Chan. I always thought that finding out about my parents would give me some sort of peace or satisfaction, but I already have that just from having you and Taiya Chan at my side. This changes nothing about who I am or what I've been through. Actually, you are wrong, Namika san. With this revelation, you are officially the last of the Namika's clan, and that means that you have certain responsibilities. Hamura, one of the council elders declared. If you are talking about the Clan Restoration Act, you can shove it. I already have two beautiful women in my life, and even if I did want another, that decision would be completely up to us, you have no standing in my personal life. Naruto declared firmly, taking the hands of Teiya and Akai. I'm afraid you are mistaken Namika-san. The laws of Kanoha clearly state that the last member of any clan must take at least four spouses in order to ensure the continuation of the bloodline. Furthermore, the women must be of a particular standard and occur. The man was silenced as Naruto's killer intent swelled to the point that the building itself began to tremble with the pressure of his aura. Select your words very carefully, counselor. The last person to dishonor one of my precious people is currently in a hospital, trying to find out if he'll ever walk again. Naruto declared darkly. So it was you that attacked the Achiha. Hokage-sama, I demand that this demon be Execu, a fat civilian member yelled, only to be silenced when Naruto's pressure increased again. First of all, you disgusting worm, that piece of shit got what he deserved. Second, even if you wanted to she wanted to, Ka-san couldn't execute me, since both myself and Akai-chan are more powerful than she or any other Kanoha ninja has ever been. That's ridiculous, even if you are the son of the Yandame, you will never be as powerful as he was, even with your demonic taint. The irate civilian yelled. Taint. 
If any part of me is tainted, it's the human part. Every demon that I have ever met has had more honor and integrity than 99% of the humans I've known. As for not being as powerful as the Yondame, well why don't we have ourselves a little challenge. You pick out some opponents, whoever and how many you want, and I'll beat them in a match. And to make it interesting we'll put a wager on it. You win, I'll marry as many women as you want, and you get to pick them all. I win, I marry who I want, when I want and you do nothing whatsoever to interfere. The blonde announced, getting gasps from Tsunade and Shizun, and confident smirks from everyone else, though Taiya and Akai were smiling for a completely different reason to the counselors. Naruto, you don't have to do this. Relax Kasan. It doesn't matter if they put me against a single person or a dozen, they cannot defeat me. A dozen eh? That sounds like a good idea. Why don't we make your opponents the entire Kanoha 12? A man with bandages wrapped around his head and much of his body declared with a victorious smirk, getting a chorus of agreements from the rest of the council, and shocked gasps from the two medics. That's it. You have the entire Kanoha ninja force to choose from, and you put me up against a group composed mostly of fresh Chunin. Kami you people are dumber than I ever imagined. How about this, to make it fair, throw in all of their senseis too. That way when I win, there will be no doubt as to who is the most powerful in the village. Naruto declared, getting mixed reactions. The civilian council were ecstatic, sure that the boy was overestimating himself. The ninja council was divided between extreme confidence and suspicious concern, knowing that no shinobi would make such a challenge without being supremely secure in their ability, and no one was that confident without reason. Tsunade and Shizun were staring at the man in total disbelief, whilst they were confident in his abilities, there is a limit to what is reasonable, and what he had just proposed was so far past that line it was simply ridiculous. The two red-headed women on the other hand, maintained their confident smirks, even releasing a small chuckle at the expressions of the others in the room. Naruto-kun thought Tsunade started. Ah San, do you remember what happened last time I took an impossible bet? Naruto interrupted, getting a small smile from the concerned women as they realized his point. Now which side of the bet do you want to be on this time? The side that opposes me, or the side that wins? Okay, Naruto-kun. I believe in you. But if you lose, I hope those beautiful ladies are quick in punishing you, cause when I get finished with you, there won't be any ass left to kick. Naruto's eyes widened as he looked to the red head on either side of him, both of whom were sporting sadistic grins and cracking their knuckles. Don't worry Taiya-chan, Akai-chan, I will die before I lose either of you. He declared, his voice returning to normal as he finally released his demonic aura. Okay, the match will be set for tomorrow, it's a lucky coincidence that everyone happens to be back in the village at the moment. We'll hold it in the Chuanin Stadium at noon. Now, unless there is any other business, I believe that this meeting is over. Tsunade declared, looking around and getting silence, she stood and signaled for Naruto, Taiya and Akai to follow as she left the room. After they had left the council room, Tsunade had led them out of the tower and towards one of the residential areas of the village. Where are we going Kasan? Naruto asked. I'm taking to see your inheritance. The Namakas may never have been a big clan, but they did have a very nice compound, and since you are now officially the last of them, it belongs to you. The busty blonde explained as she led them into the clan district, past the Hayuga, Ichiha and some other smaller clan compounds, until they got to one that looked to be considerably smaller than the others. As they walked up to the impressive gates, Tsunade turned to Naruto. This is it Naruto-kun, the Namakas compound. It has been largely left alone since your parents died since there is a seal on the gates that only lets approved people enter, and the only ones alive that still had approval were Jiraiya and Siratobi sensei She explained. Does that mean we have to wait for that dirty pervert before we can go in? Naruto asked, not particularly eager to see the man that had apparently known about his heritage, but kept it a secret. No. Once I found out about your parents I confronted him and he showed me everything, as well as adding me to the gate seal, so that I can open them. Naruto nodded and Tsunade stepped up to the lock on the gates, pressing her palm into the center and channeling a little chakra into the metal. After only a few moments, there was a loud click and the gates opened themselves. How do we add ourselves to the seal? Naruto asked, not particularly wanting to get Tsunade every time he needed to go home. There is a seal inside, I'll show you in a minute. The older woman replied, getting a nod from the younger blonde as they all walked through the gates and into the grounds of the compound. Tsunade spent the next hour showing them around the impressive grounds and the simple two-story house. The majority of the property was made up of lawns which had been converted for various uses, from simple gardens to complex obstacle courses and training fields, there was even a small lake and a wooded area that was like a perfect replica of the forests that surrounded the village. The house was very simple in design, but quite ample in size. There was a kitchen, library, dojo, lounge and dining rooms downstairs and six bedrooms upstairs, all of considerable size and comfort. 
The new occupants decided on staying in the master bedroom, with using one of the smaller rooms to house their clothes and other such things. Not that any of them really had much in terms of those, since Naruto usually wore his blood, and both women had been confined, one way or another, until about a year ago. After the tour had ended, Tsunade and Shizun left them to get settled and bid them farewell until noon the next day, when their lives may very well change forever, though all of them doubted it. Once their guests had left, Naruto turned to his two loves. What do you want to do now? Both women smirked and looked at each other before turning back to the blonde. How about we break in our new bed? Taiya suggested, making Naruto's grin grow to match theirs. Sounds like a plan to me. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. He called, summoning a single clone. Each Naruto smiled as they walked over to one of the ladies and picked them up bridal style and carried them to their bedroom. Lemon start. When they reached the bedroom, the Naruto's laid the women down on the bed gently before one of them vanished in a plume of smoke. As soon as the bunshin was gone, both women grabbed onto the real Naruto, pulling him onto the bed in between them. Akai brought her man into a passionate kiss whilst Aya was groping his chiseled chest. Aren't you forgetting something? Aya asked, frustrated by the layer of blood clothing that lay between her and her prize. Sorry, Tae-chan. Naruto apologized as his clothes began to recede, flowing off his body and into a large container that he had had specially made for precisely these situations. The inside of the plainly decorated vase was covered in seals that kept the blood in constant movement, preventing it from clotting or drying up as it usually would without his chakra running through it. The irritating barrier gone from her path, the former Odo Kanoichi drank in the magnificent side of her love. His entire body was sculpted in the lean muscles of the perfect shinobi, free from the over-cumbersome muscles of other warriors, and yet infinitely more powerful than they could ever dream of becoming. Barely containing the drool that threatened to slip past her hungry grin, Tai immediately set to work tasting every inch of the blonde Adonis's body, starting with butterfly kisses on his neck and jaw, she quickly moved to his chest and firm abs, before pausing at the waistband of the boxers he still wore. Eagerly hooking her fingers under the elastic, she ceased any hesitation and lowered the last barrier in one fluid movement, feeing his quickly hardening member. Tai reached out one of her hands to claim her prize when it was caught by another feminine hand. Looking to her right, she found the already naked form of Akai, giving her a fake reproachful look. Uh, uh Tae chan you had first taste last time, it's my turn. The demoness purred, licking her lips as she released a younger woman's hand and moved towards her former container's manhood. Ein, but he fucks me first. The pouting redhead declared as she backed off and began to strip off her clothes. Deal. Akai replied before she grasped Naruto's cock in her powerful yet delicate hand, stroking it firmly and watching in obvious delight as it grew to its impressive full length. Hello my friend. She greeted before bending down and licking the sensitive tip, drawing a throaty groan from her blonde lover. Aya, now completely nude, crawled up to the moaning man's head, drawing him into a passionate kiss. Now what can I do while she gets to play with little Narukun? She asked playfully as she pulled back from the kiss. Naruto said nothing but gripped her hips firmly with his powerful arms and brought her already soaked core over his eager mouth, licking the entire length of her lips and drawing a shuddering gasp from the retreat as she positioned her legs on either side of his head and lowered herself further onto his waiting face. Without further delay, Naruto penetrated her tight folds with his wriggling tongue, exploring her center diligently, leaving no area untouched as she writhed on his head, pinching and groping her breasts to heighten her already tremendous pleasure. Naruto let out a guttural moan, sending vibrations into his human lover's pussy, making her scream out as his demonic love engulfed his entire length in her warm mouth, letting the tip of his thick unit hit the back of her throat before she pulled back, only to repeat the motion moments later, eliciting another groan and scream from her lovers. Knowing that he wouldn't last longer with his cock buried in Akai's throat, Naruto picked up his ministrations, pressing his mouth and tongue further into the saturated flower of his love, his nose brushing across her sensitive bud in the process and making her scream louder than before as she gripped his hair, pushing him in even further. It took only a few more moments for her to reach her release, flooding the blonde's face with her sweet juices that he fervently lapped at like a dehydrated dog at a well. Moments after the younger redhead found her climax, the older one brought their mutual love to his, using her hand to rapidly stroke his length, leaving only the tip in her mouth as she circled it with her soft tongue. She grinned as she felt the telltale twitch of his release and increased her pace even further before he finally let go, crying out as he quickly filled her mouth with his thick seed. After only the first few streams she was forced to pull back lest she choke on her bitter treat, leaving the last of it to cover her face and tits as she savored the unique taste of her love's essence. Looking behind her, Taiya's pleasure glazed eyes widened at the sight of her fellow retied covered in their blonde lover's seed. Gently she raised her sensitive lower body and turned around, slowly pushing the demoness onto her back on the bed, before she began hastily licking up the thick juice from the beautiful woman's body, drawing satisfaction from the wanton moans the powerful being let loose at her ministrations. 
She grinned as the woman's cries became more desperate as she lavished attention on her no doubt painfully erect nipples, the small pink buds yearning for attention as they rose and fell rapidly with her uneven breaths. The Kai's moans turned to demanding gasps as she felt her young lover slowly travel down from her pert tits to her tight stomach and finally to her core, which was already dripping with her fluids from when she started working on herself during her servicing of her man. She let out a frustrated groan when Taya bypassed the center of her burning desire and instead began to kiss and suckle on her supple thighs, achieving little more than increasing the intense yearning that she felt radiating from her drenched pussy. Stop teasing me. She pleaded, her pride as a greater demon trampled by the overwhelming need radiating from her lower regions. Taya grinned in satisfaction at the immortal woman's begging and couldn't deny the look on her tightly scrunched face. Without warning, she plunged two fingers into the smoldering core of the demoness, getting a scream at the sudden, but very, very welcome intrusion. Again without hesitation, the fiery teen set a rapid pace as she strived to see the woman that had cared for her all those months ago, feel she had received only moments prior from their lover. Lowering her head as she maintained her actions, Taya wrapped her lips around Akai's protruding clit and gently sucked, careful to not cause undue pain to the hypersensitive bundle of nerves. The Kai screamed loudly as her body was swept up in a sea of pleasure, her hands desperately clutching at the bed sheets, her vision become spotted and hazy, as she lost herself in the bliss and cascaded over the edge, soaking Taya's grinning face with her juices. She numbly acknowledged that her fellow Redeed was lapping up the juices and licking her clean, but she was too far gone to care much about it, or the shrill cry that suddenly erupted from the girl's lips. Naruto groaned loudly as he felt the glorious warmth and friction of his lover's entrance, as he buried himself in Taya's pussy, his thick cock stretching her despite their numerous previous encounters. He grinned widely as she looked back at him, her face an adorable mixture of pleasure and anger. The little warning would be nigh she started to declare, but her words were lost as he quickly pulled back before slamming back into her, sending waves of divine pleasure rippling through her body. What was that? Naruto teased, halting his action and drawing a frustrated groan from the beautiful teen. Who the fuck cares? Just keep going for the love of she was once again cut off as a delighted scream tore from her throat as her lover restarted his motions, going harder and faster than before. Naruto's victorious murk only lasted a moment before he too got caught up in the near apocalyptic pleasure that being within his lover's tight walls brought to them both. Despite having already came only minutes prior, Naruto knew that he would not last too long within the supple vice of Taiya's core, so he slowed his pace, savoring the divine friction that their connection brought. His plan of conservation was stopped however, when the redeed became frustrated by the reduced sensation and began meeting his thrusts, slamming her ass into his hips with loud wet slaps as she increased the tempo and brought both of them closer to their inevitable releases. Having realized that his lover didn't appreciate his restrained rhythm, Naruto didn't hesitate to re-establish his previous fervent rate, increasing the volume of both the slaps and Taya's animalistic cries. Spurred on by her enthusiastic reaction, the blonde released all restraint, pistoning in and out of her tight opening at speeds only possible for the highest level shinobi or demons. The former Odo Kanoichi's arms gave out from the increased sensation, and she fell face first to the resting form of Akai, who was still recovering from her mind-blowing orgasm and had only just began to come around when her fellow Redeed's face impacted her sweat-coated breasts, causing her to snap her head up and take in the position of her lovers. The Kai grinned as she saw that both of them had their faces clenched tightly as they neared their climaxes. Not one to sit idle, the demoness reached around the younger woman's arms and began to caress and tweak at her stiff nipples, earning a surprised gasp and moan from the girl as her already overwhelming pleasure was added to. It took only a few more moments from the young lovers to reach their prize, both screaming loudly as they exchanged fluids, Taya's flowing freely onto Naruto and the bed as she was filled to the brim with the blood demon's seed, a steady stream joining with her own and flowing down her legs as she finally collapsed, inadvertently pulling his rod out as he fell back in the opposite direction. All of them lay still for a while, the younger two of the trio basking in their post-orgasmic low, whilst the older waited excitedly for them to recover so it could be her turn. After a few minutes Taya rolled off of Akai, freeing the older woman to crawl to the still panting form of her man. Her grin grew predatory as she laid eyes upon his coated member, still impressive even in its half-erect form. Oh my, you're all sticky Namika's sama. I really should clean you up. She purred as she eagerly engulfed his dick in her mouth, sucking it clean of the combined juices of her lovers and quickly bringing it back to its full glory. Naruto let out a guttural groan as she continued to pleasure him, his groan quickly turned disappointed when she abruptly stopped, but his irritated frown turned to a lusty grin when he saw that she had only stopped to switch which lips she serviced him with. The Kai paused briefly to align their organs properly before lowering herself with a steady pace, not stopping until their hips made contact and he was completely sheathed within her tight opening. She leant forward and brought him into a passionate kiss as she waited for her body to acclimatize itself to his wide girth. 
As she felt the stretch discomfort change to welcome fullness, she pulled away from the kiss and gave an experimental roll of her hips, eliciting a moan from herself and a pleasured growl from her man. Eager to continue the sensation, she repeated the action, increasing her speed and pressure as she did so. It took only moments for her movements to become less controlled and more instinctual, as her mind became clouded by the intense sensations erupting throughout her body. Never having been one to just sit back, Naruto brought his hands to her hips and lifted her slightly before slamming her back down, drawing a shrieking scream from the demoness as he drove further into her than before. Determined to regain control despite the heightened pleasure, Akai grabbed his hands and moved them to her freely bouncing tits, wordlessly delivering her order as she instituted her own pace, practically jumping on top of her young love. Naruto was happy to comply and firmly gripped her ample breasts, massaging and clasping them with his palms as he used his free thumbs to rub her rigid nipples. The blonde couldn't help the grin that formed on his face at the pleasure-stricken face of his former tenant, and he almost laughed when he took one of his hands and used it pinch her exposed clit, causing her to scream out loudly as she abruptly cascaded over the edge, her walls clamping down tightly on his cock, the added friction quickly pushing him into his climax also, his hot comb streaming from his twitching member and filling her with his essence as she collapsed limply to his chest. As she lay on him, Taya crawled back to his side, resting her head on his shoulder, as all three of them surrendered to sleep sweat embrace, all thoughts of what may happen in the morning, completely gone as they basked in their shared love. The next morning found Naruto with his two lovers standing before Tsunade, Shizune and the entire Kanoha 12 and their sensei, excluding of course Asuke, who was still in the hospital despite his protests that he should be allowed to participate in the match. They had all arrived early and, for the most part, were engaged in friendly conversations, catching up after having not seen each other for so long. The only exceptions were Ino, who looked to be fuming over what he had done to her husband, Sakura, who couldn't bring herself to look in the eyes of her former teammate after what she had done to him, and some creepy pale guy that Naruto had never seen before. The conversations quickly ceased when the village council arrived, Danzo and the elders leading them with an air of absolute confidence and smugness that left Naruto caught between laughing and growling. I'm surprised you actually showed up Namaka-san. The crippled veteran sneered, drawing laughter from everyone that knew Naruto. Did you lose your brain with that eye, hop along? My name is Naruto Uzumaki Namakas, and I have never backed down from a fight in my life, regardless of the odds. Why would I start today when there is so much on the line? The red-cloaked shinobi replied, causing the man to narrow his visible eye. You insolent little da, that's enough. Tsunade interrupted, silencing the old man instantly. We didn't come here today to talk, we came for a battle. Now, the match will be conducted under the standard Chunin exam rules. That means anything goes, however I will be acting as referee, and if I step in, you will stop immediately, is that understood? The blonde Hokage asked, getting nods from all the participants. Okay, we will be starting in a moment, so everyone not a part of the fight, please leave the arena floor now. She continued, getting nods from the council and Shizune, Akai and Teaya, who then proceeded towards the stands, the three ladies each wishing Naruto luck, though two of them knew he wouldn't need it. Once the floor was cleared of everyone but the competitors, Tsunade turned back to them, as they had now taken up lines, or rather one line of fourteen facing the confident-looking Naruto. Everyone ready? She asked, getting silent nods from everyone as they put their business faces on. Begin. She called, leaping back to a safe distance. Wow this is pretty nostalgic, hey guys. Shame Sasuke couldn't make it though, he's so much fun to whoop. Naruto laughed, getting an outraged cry from Ino. Don't you dare call him that demon scum. I'll kill you for what you did to him. She yelled as she charged towards him, pulling a kunai from her pouch as she did. Naruto easily caught her wrist and gave it a hard squeeze, shattering the bones and forcing her to drop the weapon. She let loose an agonized scream, but was cut off when Naruto delivered a simple chop to her neck, knocking her out instantly before he tossed her casually to Tsunade, who caught her limp form and passed her to the medical team she had ordered on standby. Well now that that has been dealt with, we can start the actual fight, hua, that's Uga. Kiba yelled as he and his transformed partner charged, becoming spiraling tornadoes. Naruto smirked as he pulled on his blood, forming his cloak, mask and other superfluous clothes into a barrier. Most of the younger ninja were forced to look away as the two jutsu sent up a large cloud of dust and debris. After a few moments, it cleared to reveal two feral kibas standing in front of the unmarred wall of blood. Again Akimaru. One of them called before they charged again with the same result, this time though, they continued their assault, striking the wall repeatedly in an attempt to pierce the powerful defense. After more than a dozen attacks, the wall seemed to have been broken as one of the cyclones began to tunnel through, it was revealed to be a trap however, when the hole collapsed around the spinning form, quickly putting a stop to the rotations as it began to constrict, revealing a desperately struggling Kiba, trying to escape the increasing pressure of the bloody restraint. 
The other Kiba stopped its attack and ran to his trapped partner's aid, barking loudly and revealing that the captured one was the genuine article. Naruto smirked as he gestured with his hands, guiding his blood as it began to change shape, shifting from the solid wall into two separate portions, one quickly swallowing the flailing Kiba and the other pouncing on the distressed Akamaru Kiba, consuming it in a matching crimson sphere. Having no desire to kill the boy or his companion, Naruto made another motion with his hands, causing the blood prisons to spin rapidly before suddenly liquefying, sending their prisoners flying into the arena walls at tremendous speed, rendering both unconscious but without serious injury. Kibakun. The distraught Hanada cried as she ran to their sides, accompanied by Sakura, who, to Naruto's surprise, began using medical jutsu to tend to her wounded comrade. Naruto looked over to Tsunade questioningly, but the blonde woman shook her head. Not me. Soon after you left, she started volunteering at the hospital, claiming she was eager to be of value to her village. Apparently she is quite good, but it's not really surprising, since she has apparently always had perfect chakra control. The Hokage explained, getting a nod from the younger man. Naruto started to reply, but stopped when he found that he was unable to move his body. Shifting his eyes, which were pretty much the only thing he could move, he was able to see Shikamaru standing with his hands held in his family's seal, his shadow stretched along the ground till it met with the blonde demons. Hajimane success. And with your body frozen, you can't use that blood shield of yours. Chaoji, your turn. He strained his eyes further and managed to make out the chunky form of the shadow user's best friend standing next to him and preparing a jutsu of some kind. The blonde demon, despite all of the things he had seen and done during his bizarre life, was still somewhat put off when the Akimichi's arm suddenly grew tremendously and swept towards his immobile form. Had he been pretty much anyone else, this may have troubled or even worried him, but Naruto had a few tricks of his own. In the space of barely a second, his blood wall had diverted from where it was after having thrown the two canine opponents and reformed, intercepting the chubby shinobi's attack and catching his hands. Naruto let out a closed-mouth chuckle as he saw the shocked expression on everyone's faces. Be but how? Shikamaru muttered, shocked that not only did he not have to gesture to control his blood, but also that it had the brute force to stop Chaoji's buben bike and no jutsu. His time for considering these new revelations was cut short however, as the blood wrapped tightly around his friend's hands and forearms, before actually picking him up with ease, despite the impressive increase the technique gave to his total mass. Chaoji, cancel the technique. The genius shinobi yelled, but it was too late, before anyone had the chance to properly react, the blood casually tossed a misshapen chunin, sending him careening into his friend and forcing both of them to release their jutsu. Man, that is a weird feeling, not having control of your body. Naruto declared with a shudder. Lucky I don't have to do anything to control my blood, eh hey guys? He taunted rhetorically. His joking ended quickly as he felt a release of chakra and turned to see a large cloud of weapons, bugs and what looked like 3D drawings. He quirked an eyebrow at the strange combination before everyone lost sight of him as the wave-like attack overcame him, kicking up a rather significant amount of dust as a result of the impact. For a few moments, everything went silent, but it wasn't to last as there was suddenly a deafening roar and a release of chakra pressure that brought many of the audience and participants to their knees. The torrent of chakra blasted away the dust cloud, revealing Naruto, or at least, what most of them assumed was Naruto. Her crouching where the blonde had been was now what could only be described as a monster or demon. It was huge, easily more than six and a half feet tall, and its broad, muscular build put even guys to shame. Its general shape was that of a human's, with a few differences. Its hands, for instance, rather than having blunt human fingers, had two-inch claws growing from the end of each digit. Its head had no ears or nose, and its eyes were more like flat white, ovals than eyes in the traditional sense. The most terrifying thing though, was its mouth. Whereas an average human mouth would struggle to fit the fist of an adult man, this mouth looked like it could fit his entire head. The impressive gape was only made more horrifying by the presence of dozens of razor-sharp teeth that could only find rivals in the mouths of prehistoric carnivores. Just when its mouth seemed to be out of tricks, a long, round tongue lashed out freely, literally dripping with what looked more like venom of some kind than regular saliva. Then Naruto-kun. Tsunade stuttered, shocked by the transformation despite the description she received during his debriefing. Hi Kasan. Damn it feels good to be back in my true form. He declared, standing to his full height and rolling his joints like they were stiff. Run, he's let the Kaiubi have control. The only conscious member of the civilian council screamed hysterically, drawing hearty laughter from both Naruto and his girlfriends, one of whom was literally drooling as she looked at her mate's demon form. Do I look like the Kaiubi, you pathetic little worm? Naruto taunted. What? What the hell happened to you Naruto? Shikamaru asked, having finally managed to move his chubby friend's body off his and stand up. Sixteen years ago the Kaiubi no Kitsune attacked this village, everyone knows this. 
What most people our age don't know is that a higher demon, like the Kaiubi cannot be killed by humans, so the Yandane did the next best thing, he sealed her into his newborn son, me. He explained, getting shocked looks from most of those present, though Shino, Niji and Shikamaru didn't seem as surprised as the rest. But as you said, you don't look like the Kaiubi, so what is that? Shino asked. A little while after I left, I was in a particularly nasty battle with some S-rank missing nin. I managed to catch one of them by surprise with my blood technique, but the other one completely destroyed me, in the end I only survived because one of his techniques backfired and the Kaiubi was able to save me. This drew more shocked gasps and expressions of disbelief at the thought of a demon doing anything helpful, which caused a Kai to mutter under her breath about stupid judgmental humans. After that, me and the Kaiubi actually started to become friends, and eventually. More. This drew even more gasps and even some cries of outrage from the council. Does that mean you're gay? Tenton asked, causing the massive red demon before her to face vault, a unique image to say the least. No. A Kai-chan is a woman. He yelled, causing everyone to look at the woman that had been introduced earlier as a Kai. Said woman grinned foxily and waved, causing many of those present to also face vault. Are you saying that she is the Kai-ubi? Shikamaru asked, getting a nod from both Naruto and Akai. But how is she outside of the seal? He asked, causing Naruto to raise an eyebrow. Or at least he would if he had them in this form. That's your question. Not, why isn't she a gigantic fox? Or why isn't she eating puppies and terrorizing children? Hey, I only did that a few times when I was really hungry, and you know damn well those bastard children started it. The redeeded demon is shouted defensively, causing those who had only just recovered to face vault again. Well it's obvious that both you and her are more than powerful enough to do whatever the hell you want, and since you haven't done anything overtly threatening yet, it's only fair to assume that you don't mean us any particular harm. And since you've apparently just changed forms, it's not much of a stretch to assume she can't too. Reite. Well uh, that's the next part of the story. After we had been together for a while, I decided that I should see if I could release her, so I ripped off the seal. Basically, it didn't go as planned, and the influx of demonic chakra activated an ancient demonic heritage, which transformed me into a full demon. Apparently I'm descended from demon royalty. Naruto explained with a shrug and an innocent expression, which just looked freaky when displayed on his demonic features. Does that mean you're like a prince or something? Lee asked, seeming more excited than surprised about all that had been revealed. Naruto tilted his head to the side and looked at Akai. I've never really thought about it, Akai-chan. The foxy woman struck a thinking pose for a few moments before shrugging. I guess so. I never thought about it either, but you are descended from the demon king, so I guess that does technically make you a prince. Look at that, I'm dating a prince. And Ma said I would never amount to anything, I'm glad I ate that preachy bitch. After a few moments of awkward silence where everyone stared at the strange demoness who was doing what was apparently a victory dance, Tsunade cleared her throat, getting everyone's attention. As much as this little pause has been enlightening, there is still a match going on, and some of us have other things planned for today, so if you wouldn't mind continuing, that'd be great. She declared, getting sheepish looks from the participants, though Naruto's looked more like a mortifying scowl. Without further ado, the battle resumed, with Tenten, Shino and Sai sending another combination attack at their foe, though this time it went very differently. As soon as the barrage was launched, Naruto slipped into a crouch, similar to the position a sprinter takes before the start of a race, with both hands on the ground and one leg extended behind him. Once he was into position, more than a dozen whip-like appendages grew from his back, each ending with a 12-inch curved and serrated blade. The new limbs were only stationary for a moment before they all extended away from his body, moving faster than most could follow, they began to tear apart the incoming attack, deflecting Tenton's projectiles and slaughtering size ink beasts. Shino tried to command his Kikai to attack the connecting parts of the appendages, but the bugs refused to go near them, having quickly learned that the demonic chakra was fatally toxic to their systems. After only a few moments the attack was defeated, as all of Sai's creatures were killed, all of Tenten's weapons were harmlessly batted away, and Shino was forced to recall his rebelling colony. So this is the defensive mode he's been working on, eh? Taya asked, getting a nod from Akai, who had guessed the same, neither of them having seen this strategy before. Of course, with his healing he could have just let the attacks hit him, and he wouldn't have been much worse off. The demon is stated, making Taya snort and shake her head. So he's just showing off again. Typical. It just goes to show that, whether demon or human, all men are the same. Maybe in some ways, but there are defiantly differences. Think about the Achiha, are you suggesting he is the same as Nerukun? This quickly made the younger woman's eyes widen. Oh Kami no. That little shit stain is nothing like Nerukun. She declared, getting an agreeing chuckle from her female lover. 
Things remained active back in the battleground as Naruto's blades went on the offensive, one catching Tenten by surprise and knocking her out with a flat side, whilst others lashed out at Shino and Sai, both of whom had moderate success in dodging, but quickly started to become overwhelmed. This resulted in Shino forfeiting, stating that his main offensive ability was useless and it was obvious he could not keep up his defensive approach. Sai, on the other hand, had been given strict order by Danzo prior to the match that he could not surrender under any circumstances and must try to kill the demon if possible. This plan was cut short however, when one of the blades managed to score a hit on the agile boy, leaving a debilitating stab wound in his abdomen that resulted in Tsunade immediately pulling him from the match so he could get medical attention. But the immediate threats taken care of, Naruto pulled back his blood blades and reverted to his upright stance. As he looked around, he noticed teammate Sensei, Kurinai, frustratedly going through several sets of hand seals, with apparently no effect. Realizing what was happening, he turned towards the woman, getting her attention. If you're trying Jinjutsu you might as well conserve your chakra, in this form, my senses work differently to those of a normal human, so your techniques designed to disrupt them are completely useless. As he began to turn around, he once again found himself locked in Shikamaru's Kajimane. Niji, Hinata, try your Jaiwakin. The Nara air yelled, getting nods from the two Hayuga, who leapt forward and slipped into mirroring stances. Aki Hayaku Nijihachi show. The cousins declared in sync before launching their rapid assault on the immobilized demon. For half a minute they repeatedly struck at his red flesh with their chakra-enhanced pokes, before they each finished with a chakra-loaded palm to his chest and back respectively. The pale-eyed ninja stood, panting slightly, Niji in front of him and Hinata to his back, they and everyone else were shocked to see however, that their combined assault using their clan's most powerful attack seemed to have no effect at all. Naruto stood, just as he was before they started, as he calmly looked down at his chest, where the majority of their attacks had been focused, and brushing it gently, as if to remove some dust. Well, what you know. Seems my demon form is impervious to the Jayuikin. Isn't that interesting? He asked rhetorically, as all the present Hayuga gaped as the complete uselessness of their feared technique. Before either of them could regain their composure, Naruto raised his arms parallel to the ground, extending both considerably and molding the hands into large hammer shapes, before rapidly spinning in a circle, successfully nailing both pale-eyed warriors in the side of the head and instantly knocking them out. He finished his spin and smirked. How do you like my new technique? I call it the Makyo Katen. He let out a chuckle at his own joke, but it was cut short when he was suddenly rocked by a powerful fist colliding with his cheek. Shaking off his stupor, he was able to make out two green blurs circling him. His grin spread as he realized he would finally be getting a challenge from the two Tajutsu masters. Hinoha to Senpu. Guy and Lee announced as they both leapt forward and delivered a powerful spinning kick, with Guy aiming for Naruto's head and Lee going for his thighs. The attacks landed at the same time and, due to their impacts in opposite directions, resulted in the demon doing a full cartwheel in the air before managing to land in a crouch on the ground. Now in his defensive position again, Naruto's blood blades emerged from his back and began to lash out at the youthful pair. For a few minutes the fight continued in a stalemate, with Guy and Lee too fast to be caught by his blades, but not fast enough to bypass them, despite whatever techniques or methods they tried, even after removing their weights. Finally, the two green beasts pulled back and paused, momentarily looking into each other's eyes before giving a slight nod and their infamous toothy grins. Heyman, Kaiuman, Seiman Kai. They yelled, both becoming enshrouded in powerful chakra auras as they opened the first three gates. If anything, Naruto's grin grew even bigger, he hadn't faced anyone this powerful in years, and now he was battling two of them at once. Let's do this. He yelled as his own aura increased, rising to match those being released by the Tajutsu specialists, both of whom had matching grins, their thoughts mirroring the demons perfectly. In an instant, all three of them vanished, and the arena was swept up in green and red blurs as the three powerful shinobi engaged in a vicious Tajutsu battle. It soon became apparent however that Naruto was being overwhelmed. His current speed and power may have been comparable to the two training fanatics, but there was a significant disparity in skill, and even his form-shifting abilities were not enough to make up for the fact that it was two-on-one. After a full minute of most of the audience being able to see nothing more than three colored blurs, Naruto suddenly reappeared as he went flying into the arena wall, impacting with such force that he didn't stop until he was in the fourth row of seats. Soon after he came to a stop, Guy and Lee also reappeared, both with numerous bruises and cuts marring their bodies and breathing heavily from the strain of the intense battle. Despite this, both had happy grins adorning their faces, obviously enjoying the rare challenge of a foe that could keep up with their released forms. The grin slipped slightly as they looked over to Naruto, only to see him stand up and roll his shoulders and neck before leaping back into the arena. This is awesome. I haven't had this much fun since last time me and Akai-chan played volleyball with the Uchi ass.
He declared, getting a chuckle from some and angry glares from others. You are truly impressive Naruto-kun. To be able to keep up with me and Guy sensei with three gates released is amazing. Lee exclaimed, getting a nod from many of the audience who agreed that it was a very impressive feat. Heh, thanks Lee, you guys are pretty good yourselves, I haven't been challenged like this in a very long time. Naruto replied with a grin. Shall we continue? He asked, getting nods from the green-clad duo before they all vanished again. As before, all that most of those present could see were green and red blurs, and the occasional violent collision that kicked up dust, unlike last time however, it was not Naruto that re-emerged first, this time it was Lee, who was found to be laying in a deep crater after a particularly large collision. Moments later, Guy appeared crouching by his student's side and checking on his status. Shortly after the Jounin emerged, so did Naruto, standing on the outer rim of the crater. Sorry, Guy-sensei, but using the gates caught up with me. Lee admitted, his voice obviously strained by severe pain. It's okay, my youthful student. You have already proven that your flames of youth burn brightly. Guy declared, pulling Lee into a tearful embrace. Medics, get Lee out of here, he is unable to continue. Tsunade ordered as several medical ninja swarmed into the crater and carefully pulled the boy onto a stretcher to be taken away. I'm sorry about Lee, Guy. I didn't want to hurt him, but I didn't want to disrespect him by holding back. Naruto confessed, getting a nod from the spandex-wearing Jounin. Do not worry Naruto-san, most of the damage done to Lee was because of the gates and shouldn't be too hard for the medics to repair. I'm sure he would appreciate you doing him such an honor though, so for that I thank you. Guy declared with a respectful bow. Shall we continue? Of course. But first, Shaman, Toman, Kimon Kai. The Tajutsu master yelled, releasing a tremendous amount of chakra as his body turned red and his eyes became pupil-less. Naruto's grin spread even wider than ever as he, once again, raised his chakra output to match his opponent, causing all but the strongest of the surrounding shinobi to wince under the pressure that the two powerful warriors were outputting. Without another word, the two opposing shinobi vanished, leaving not even the blurs that were visible before, even those using Dijutsu to monitor the fight, were having difficulty keeping up with the obscene levels of speed that they were utilizing. The only things that let the majority of those present know that the fight was continuing were the radiant chakra presences and the near-constant sound of powerful impacts echoing throughout the arena. After several minutes of shock and wonder for the audience members, the sound of laughter caught their attention. Turning their collective heads to the source, they found a Kai, recently revealed to be the Kai Ubi no Kitsune, laughing. What are you laughing at, demon? One of the council elders spat. The Kai didn't turn around and instead kept her focus on the center of the arena. You're about to find out, human. She replied, with just as much distance on his species as he placed on hers. Before the outraged elder could do anything that would likely result in his death, a loud gasp drew everyone's attention back to the arena. The council members were shocked to find that Guy had reappeared, but it was obviously not by his choice. The flamboyant Jounin was on his hands and knees, obviously straining to stay conscious, and when they looked at his body, it was not hard to see why. His garish spandex suit had been all but shredded, and the flesh underneath wasn't in much better condition, every visible inch being covered in cuts or bruises, to the point that it looked like the powerful shinobi had been passed through a meat grinder. His skin, or at least the unmarred sections, had returned to its natural color, indicating his forced closure of the celestial gates. To everyone present one thing was painfully clear, Guy, one of the most powerful ninja in Kanoha today, had been utterly destroyed. The council's apprehension and worry were only increased when Naruto reappeared, seemingly completely unharmed. Of course, this was due to his body's unique composition, which allowed him to recover even serious damage in moments, but the council didn't know this, from what they could tell, it seemed as the boy hadn't even been touched as he ripped one of the village's strongest apart. You might want to get those medics over here Kasan. His wounds aren't too serious by themselves, but collectively he might be in trouble soon. Naruto declared, getting a nod from the shocked blonde woman, who shook herself off and called for the medics, who took the now unconscious man away. Naruto sighed as he once again felt his body go stiff and refuse his orders. This same trick is getting old Shika. He declared as he turned and looked at the Nara, who was worried as his technique should have prevented him from doing that. His worry turned to fear as a blood blade slowly emerged from Naruto's shoulder, aiming in his direction. I forfeit. He announced, releasing his technique as Naruto smiled and reabsorbed the blade back into his body. Tsunade would have been upset about him giving up without taking any damage, but she really couldn't blame him under the circumstances. She nodded to the slatching Chuanin, and he gave a slight bow before going up to the stands to watch the rest of the fight. Naruto turned to look at his four remaining opponents, Asuma, Kurinai, Kakashi and Sakura. Kakashi and Asuma both drew weapons, obviously still reasonably confident in their chances. Kurinai also drew a kunai, but was visible troubled by the uselessness of her specialty. And then there was Sakura, who was a quivering combination of terrified and ashamed. 
Naruto was forced to push her out of his thoughts as the three Jounins attacked together. Remembering Kakashi's preference for ninjutsu, he decided against his defensive mode, knowing that whilst it was extremely effective against ninjutsu or weapons, it had limited capabilities against ranged ninjutsu. So, with a wide grin, he shifted to what he had labeled his offensive mode. He had gotten the inspiration for this form from a strange movie he had seen once about mutated turtles that fought like ninja. The villain in the film had worn a suit of armor that was practically covered in blades, and, whilst Akai rebuked him for getting inspiration from such a stupid source, even she couldn't deny the effectiveness of his shredder armor. The idea was rather simple, put blades anywhere that could be used for attacking. For effect and because he was a natural showman, he started the transformation at his feet and let it spread up his body. The first blades to manifest sprouted from the front and back of his ankles. The three running along the top of his feet and out past his toes where they curved into claws, and another three relatively short hooked ones coming out the back that ended touching the ground a few inches behind his heel. The next ones came from his shins, four, short, upwards hooking spikes in a diamond formation. After that were his knees, which each sported one, thick, six-inch spike with a slight upwards curve. His thighs and torso were completely bare, purely because it was extremely difficult to actually strike someone with anything he tried to place on them. The next to emerge were four, three-inch spikes in a diamond formation on each shoulder, long enough to do damage if he shoulder-tackled someone, but not long enough for him to stab himself when he rolled his neck, he learned that lesson the hard way. The last features to emerge were the same ones that he had used to break into Sasuke's room all that time ago, a pair of three foot blades running across the top of his forearm to a foot past his fist and six inches off his elbow. All three of the Jounin quickly halted in their approach as they took in Naruto's new, even more terrifying form. Holy shit. Asuma muttered as his cigarette fell limply from his mouth. Kurinai, who usually would have rebuked him for both his swearing and smoking, could only nod in agreement of his statement. Are you guys coming or what? I've been waiting to test this form out against some decent opponents for a long time. Naruto whined, though with his current features, it seemed more like a vicious snarl than the immature whinging of a teenager. Uh, right, let's go guys. Kakashi declared, getting reluctant nods from the others, who got back into their ready positions and charged the walking blender. The demon prince blocked the two shinobi strikes with his arm blades, whilst snapping off a kick towards Kurinai, forcing her to leap back. Hoping to catch him off balance, Asuma and Kakashi pushed hard against his arms, it backfired though, as he used the momentum to do a backflip, lashing out with his legs and scoring deep gashes on both men's forearms. Capitalizing on their flinches, Naruto leapt forward as soon as his feet hit the ground, charging the momentarily defenseless men. Kakashi, having managed to retain the reflexes he built up over years of using the Sharingan, was able to avoid the follow-up attack by dodging to the side, Asuma was not so fortunate and was caught by the demon's left wrist blades. The razor-sharp appendage tore through his flak jacket like tissue paper and dug into his flesh, leaving a gaping diagonal wound from shoulder to hip. Kurinai screamed as she saw her lover gravely wounded, but her shock left the usually compassed woman unguarded, and Naruto took quick advantage, vanishing in a burst of speed and reappearing behind her, holding one blade to her throat and poking another into her spine. Surrender. He stated simply, getting a tearful nod from the woman, who ran to her lover's side as soon as the blades were removed. She was immediately joined by Tsunade, who began to work on healing his wounds. After a few minutes of concerned silence, the blonde woman sighed and stood up. They'll be fine, it looks like Naruto-kun managed to pull back in time, so no serious damage was done. She announced, getting a relieved sigh from the man's friends and especially Kurinai, who stayed with him as the medics arrived and carried him away from the arena. I think there has been enough violence for one day, perhaps we should call them off. Wait Ka-san, there hasn't been a result yet. And we both know those fuckers on the council won't accept this as a conclusion, then they will continue to pester us about this craw bullshit. Let us finish this once and for all. Naruto interrupted his adoptive mother, who reluctantly nodded, unable to deny the truth of his words. Be ready Naruto? Kakashi asked, getting back into his ready stance. Naruto grinned and gave a slight nod as he mirrored his former sensei's motion. Up in the stands, there continued to be mixed reactions to the battle that continued before them. Now that Kakashi is alone, he's probably going to start using ranged ninjutsu, since that would have been difficult before with his teammates nearby. Akai stated, getting an agreeing nod from Teaya. You sound worried demon filth. Not so confident in the brat's abilities anymore. Danzo taunted. Both women turned to the man with confident grins. Not in the least flamingo boy. Narukun is still going to destroy the foolish human, it may just take longer than it did with the others. Akai replied confidently before her visage darkened considerably. You would also do well to remember your manners. I am not yet a citizen of this village and as such, have no responsibility to obey its laws. 
she threatened, unleashing a torrent of murderous intent at the crippled man, who visibly paled, as did the elders who were sitting next to him. For the last few minutes both competitors had been locked in a stalemate of sorts, Kakashi, having decided that going anywhere near Naruto's blade-covered body would be a very bad idea, started going through his extensive jutsu library and launching every mid to long-range elemental jutsu that he knew at his former student. Naruto, having learned a while ago that his healing did not work as well on fire or lightning-based attacks, was forced to remain completely on the defensive, dodging every attack, lest his genius sensei figure out his weakness and capitalize on it. His luck ran out however, as Kakashi used one of his more powerful techniques, Raiden. Raiken, and managed to land a solid hit on his right leg, sending a powerful electrical current through his body. To everyone's shock and the council's delight, Naruto's body convulsed lightly as all of his blades retracted against his will and would not return regardless of his commands. Kakashi, being one of the very few true genius ninja, quickly noticed his opponent's weakness and moved to capitalize on it. Forming the three hand seals faster than most people could follow, the silver-haired man formed his only original jutsu. Everyone's eyes widened as they saw the former copy nin's hand become encased in lightning as he charged quickly at the demon prince. Naruto, for the first time since his demonization, became concerned for his health as he realized that his regenerative abilities would not reactivate in time for him to avoid taking damage from the feared technique that was bearing down on him. Had he been hit by the jutsu any other time, he would have taken mild damage that would have quickly healed, but since he was currently unable to manipulate his body, it would be just like taking the attack in his human form. Stealing his reserve, Naruto focused all his control into reforming one of the blades on his right arm and charged to intercept the incoming Jounin. Tsunade, realizing the danger and the situation, tried to intervene, but she was far too late, and the two powerful shinobi collided, raising an enormous cloud of dust from the impact. After a few moments of everyone waiting on bated breath, the dust cleared to reveal both men standing in a deadlock, Kakashi with his hand sticking out of a large hole that passed clean through his opponent's shoulder, and Naruto, who had his wrist blade pressed firmly against the Jounin's throat, drawing a slight trickle of blood. Wanna call it a draw? Kakashi panted between breaths. Not a chance. Surrender or die. Naruto replied, his voice cold as ice. Kakashi narrowed his eyes. If I hadn't diverted that attack you would be dead right now, it's a draw he stated firmly. I don't think so Kakashi. Had we both gone for the kill your head would be lying on the ground and I would be repairing a hole around my heart rather than the one in my shoulder. Naruto explained and before Kakashi could object, he felt a pressure building around his hand. Looking at the wound, he was both shocked and amazed to see that the tissue was reforming and actually starting to constrict his hand quite tightly. The former Anbu captain was smart enough to know when he was defeated, so he nodded his agreement, letting out a weary sigh as Naruto released the pressure on his wrist, allowing him to pull it out of the rapidly healing wound. I don't understand though, my lightning attack clearly upset your manipulation abilities, why didn't it affect your regeneration too? The Jounin asked as he stepped away, rubbing his aching wrist. It did. And for all intensive purposes, I took that hit without my regenerative abilities, meaning I felt it like any human would. The difference is, as soon as my regeneration recovered, even a direct strike to my heart would have been repaired. You simply would not have been able to kill me fast enough for it to occur before my manipulation reactivated and healed me. Naruto explained, though he spoke in a low voice, not wanting such potentially damaging information to be known by those he couldn't trust and, his choosing not to take his chance to kill him, proved that Kakashi was worthy of such trust. Well, with Kakashi defeated that means that Nero, hold on Kasan, you're forgetting someone. Naruto interrupted, getting a confused look from the busty blonde. Who? She asked simply, before a terrified gasp was heard from behind them, drawing their attention. Simultaneously everyone present turned their attention to the one competitor that everyone seemed to have forgotten about, the violently trembling Sakura Hirono. Everyone held their breath as Naruto slowly started walking towards the frightened girl, all of them apparently too shocked to actually intervene and save the defenseless Kinoichi. The tension only grew as he finally stopped, standing barely a meter in front of his former teammate. Sakura tightly squeezed her eyes shut as he raised his clawed hand, knowing that she could do nothing to stop him and accepting her fate. She flinched violently when she felt his hand come into contact with her shoulder, but her fear turned to confusion as she felt no pain. Opening her eyes, she found herself staring into the sapphire blue orbs of the man that she betrayed, but rather than the rage or hurt that she expected to see, she saw only happiness and compassion. Then Naruto? she stuttered confusedly. Relax Sakura. I am not going to hurt you. It is obvious that you have taken my advice and become a true Kinoichi. I am proud of you. He declared before pulling her into a comforting embrace. Feeling his warmth and hearing the words she longed to hear for so long, the pink-haired girl broke down and began to cry, weeping openly into his muscular chest. Naruto-kun. 
Sunaid asked, having overcome her stupor at the sound of her son's voice. Aren't you mad? For a long time I was. But eventually, I realized that it wasn't helping anyone, so I let it go. Besides, she was just going along with what the team told her to do, and she has obviously rectified that situation and grew into a fine kanoichi, just like I always knew she could be. No, I'm not mad. I'm just happy to see that she is finally reaching the potential that I always saw in her. Well that's all well and good, but technically we still have a mad, I forfeit. I'm a medical ninja, not a fighter, and even if I was, I wouldn't stand a chance against Naruto. Sakura interrupted, getting a nod from the Hokage. Sakura Hirono has forfeited the match, that means that the undisputed winner is Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. Tsunade declared with a cheerful grin, drawing applause from Akai, Teiya, Shizun and, surprisingly, several of the clan heads. What are you fuckers clapping about? Teiya demanded suspiciously. Shikaku Nara, who, along with his former teammates and the heads of the other major ninja clans had been applauding, turned to her. It is painfully obvious that Naruto could have slaughtered every single person in that ring the moment the match started, yet the only people that were seriously injured were Guy, Asuma and that creepy pale kid, all of whom will be fine in a week or two. He had the means, motive and opportunity to kill all of our children, and there would have been nothing that we could have done about it, but instead, he chose to only knock most of them out and leave them alone as soon as they surrendered. Regardless of whether or not he is a demon, he clearly means us no harm, so we have no issue with him. He explained, getting agreeing nods from everyone but the elders, Danzo and the civilians, all of whom looked even more pissed than ever. You may have wanted a demon brat, but soon my day will come, and when it does, you and your demon whores will bow at my feet. Danzo thought with a wicked sneer written across his face. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.